Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to learn how to support the show, go to patreon.com slash laststandmedia. Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, and welcome to episode 42 of Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast. As always, I'm joined by the OG checked one himself, Lord Cognito. Yeah, Dukes had to do the rite of passage. <laughs> <laughs> Both Dukes were given the rite of passage by the OG. Yo, first off, it's good to be here. Fantastic mm-hmm. show topics lined up. Oh, oh man, dude, we I have s- a lot. Yeah, we got a lot, man. How you been, man? How you been? I'm good. I'm a little flustered. Oh, I've learned something kind of displeasing this week. Oh, what's up? What's up? So I'm scrolling around the news lately. (laughs) Did you know that New Zealand has an official wizard? I did not know this. (laughs) He got fired. (laughs) How did wizard get fired on his day off? (laughs) I know. This man was 88. And he okay. was he he was uh, performing they called acts of wizardry and other wizard like services since 1998, getting about ten grand, sixteen grand a year doing this. Okay, acts collected over three hundred thousand dollars in his multi decade stint as a wizard, <laughs> and they fired this man when he's eighty eight. Damn, right? Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. What's up with Gandalf? It ain't it ain't happening. <laughs> like I was, like what's going on? I like. I, I want to know. I want to know what the defi- acts of wizardry. Like, what's the definition? What what determines yeah. the acts of wizardry? Yeah, <laughs> he he said when he got fired, there are a bunch of bureaucrats who have no <laughs> imagination. <laughs> Yo, shout out to him, man. He was out here. He just didn't be standing this time. You know, there's protocols with with this wizardry. I guess. I know. I know. I don't know what happened, but they they shut him down. There's a whole bunch of articles <laughs> on. I just wanted to bring it to the people's attention and. uh Make it very clear what was going on here. Yeah, so anyway, that's breaking. that's breaking news. That's breaking news. Otherwise, we have a lot of gaming news this week. Mm-hmm. Every single item on this list of news, we have about, I think, 11 or 12 items could mm-hmm. literally be our number one headline. So right. we hope you are strapped in for what is an exciting show. I mean, even I was I was writing it up and like our number eight, for example, is God of War coming to PC. And it's like that is a number one in a lot of ways. So, yeah, absolutely. We got, absolutely. We got a lot to talk about. So we're going to dive right in as sure. always to find and Duke Ultimate up on the patreon that's episode 38 we talk about xbox's miscommunications after the fable kerfuffle if you will we got to get into it so we had a very realistic reflection on some moments that xbox has missed the mark and we're looking forward to seeing some thoughts on that so go ahead and give that a listen if you have yet to very good episode very passionate Probably one of our realer episodes, those good heart to hearts. You know, mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta talk to them sometimes. You know, Absolutely. What's going on. But yeah, Absolutely. check that out, y'all. Get on that Patreon. Get on that five dollar tier. You know, mm-hmm. get all the things early. You know. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Saying. We we got some write in saying that people are starting to sign up just for our show. I oh, appreciate that's cool. that a lot. So that's yeah, really cool. Very, very cool. cool. Other than that, uh, any resubmissions or new submissions of mobile ratings are much appreciated. We're just approaching five hundred, so it'd be really cool if we can get that show's growing a lot. Again, thank you all so much. And thank you to guests who have been joining us, who yes. have helped us grow this show. Oh, it man, uh, puts so us man. on the map a lot more, even though I think we're we're very talented cog, but we, we exactly. got to get the help of the people. The yeah. Xbox community, community is more than willing to help us out. Absolutely. Much love. With that, some before we begin, then we'll get into the warm-up questions. First off, Hyperkin's doing a 20th anniversary Duke controller. So if you're like us and you got OG checked by Ryan <laughs> McCaffrey, you can spend $90 up until November 1st on Hyperkin's website. The controller launches on Xbox's 20th anniversary, November 15th. Controllers look awesome. There's a lot of different versions of them. They get the little 20th anniversary logo. Go ahead and give it a look. Really cool. Really, really cool. I heard that date. It's it's, it's a very special day. Very nice Mm -hmm. day. I like that date. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. We got a lot coming for that one. That's our number one story this week. Mm -hmm. Another follow-up comes from That Strong Nerd. Not a quick question, or not a question, but oh boy. I've never been so frustrated hearing someone talk about my beloved franchise, whether it's backwards compatible or not. It lasted about two to three minutes, and I would have been like, eh, whatever, if it was just a quick, incorrect comment. But no, it lasted minutes. The whole series of Splinter Cell is back compat and playable on Xbox. Rant over. Besides that, love you guys. Keep up the great work. Thank you. 
Yeah, we need this collect. We need this correction. We we had a couple of corrections that that we needed to do big Mm -hmm. time. So yeah, shout out to the stronger. I just just want to say Mm -hmm. something with the stronger because he's definitely on fire with that. Like the dig, that means you hit the gym health as well. I like that Mm -hmm. strong nerve. Mm -hmm. But um, I was gonna say is in my defense, (laughs) I did say I wasn't sure. But for here's the thing: Xbox has put it to me, made a future for me to jump in this app and download. Remember, get perks every time Mm -hmm. you're in the app. So I was in the app. Oh, yeah, I forgot you know about that. Yeah, yeah they, I, I'm like, I live in the app. I want my five points every day. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sitting there, and it's like they got to fix that error because every Splinter Cell game, when you see it listed, and you try to download it, it's like, oops, mm-hmm. there's an error. But after after the show, obviously, I went straight to it just to make sure. And then, yeah, they were all there. So salute yep. to the Strong Nerd and a couple of the comment boys. They made mm-hmm. sure mm-hmm. to let me know oh. it's in there. So oh, the last said audience is always on us with correction. Oh, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You, you, you'll see. You'll see. The comment boys don't play. <laughs> one, 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 one of them was on me. So oh, yeah, we'll okay. get into that in a sec. But first, some good news. Lee Doherty writes in, hey, DMP and DLC. No question this week. Just wanted to say loving the content you're putting out. Recently up my sub to say, hey, and get the shows early. I can't do the three-day wait anymore. I need my DDs and sacred symbols ASAP. Keep up the good work, fellas. Thank you, Lee. Appreciate love, that you love the yeah. content that much. Much love. I'm telling you, that $5 tier is hot, man. Mm-hmm. Get on that. I'm still a patron, even though I work here. <laughs> yeah, me too. Bro. I'm not missing yeah. Sacred Symbols Plus, yeah. and uh, I want to see me too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there we go. I got to support me. I got to put food on my we table. We got to put food. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> got to support us. Andrew Acrolox is our next before we begin. The Dukes are in the house. I usually don't write in, but Cog's giddy enthusiasm about your theory that the previously leaked Mandalorian game might be revealed during the Bring Home the Bounty event was a particular note to me, mostly because the leak itself is nothing more than a devoted fan's passion project rather than an official concept being worked on by any company. Simply, the man is a 3D art teacher by trade, and what started as a simple character showcase for his students turned into a full demo that made the rounds a few months back. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I thought I should mention this given that I believe neither Sacred Symbols or Defining Duke has mentioned this, and I hate to see Cog so excited about something that won't see the light of day. I hope you have a, I just found out this new Mando game I was really looking forward to isn't actually real kind of day. <laughs> Cheers. Cold hearted, but we needed this. Actually, I was talking to my friends about this like night of before I even saw any corrections. I brought this topic up. I was like, yeah, I think this is what they're going to do. And they went, nah, dude, fan game or uh, it was it was Damn. a project. And I was like, nah, I forgot. I just said it on Duke and there's no going back. It's already rendered now. And I just you, that's the podcasts are dangerous. You just know when you make that mistake, it it sits in there. There's yeah, no yeah, re-rendering. For sure. I, I wanted to dream, though. I wanted mm-hmm. to I wanted to hope. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, but he, we needed the correction. Again, good to get the clarity. So this way, expectations are set. Yeah. My money's on Zynga's Star Wars Hunters <laughs> for that, that little event there. So enjoy your Facebook games, everybody. It, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. Speaking of dreaming, Mike Poe writes in, Good day, Dukes. No video game related question or write in this week, but I thought I'd share an interesting dream last night. It was that classic theater kid's dream. I was about to go on stage for a musical production, but I couldn't remember my lines or the right notes to sing. Dream Mike Poe was sweating with nervousness, but suddenly guess who swooped in to save the day? Mr. Matty plays himself. Dream Matty pats me on the back, says, I got you, and proceeds to go on stage and act and sing my part. Just wanted to write in and say thanks to being a dream bro, Matty. And Cog, I look forward to your inevitable clutch dream appearance. Keep up the good work, dudes. <laughs> so, 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 to, so first of all salute to mike poe <laughs> i love yeah. the day mike poe he's yeah. out here he's outside so um look that's hilarious i think you know what's funny it took me back to the last damn media event it literally took me back when yeah you was up there because see for you dream maddie was in your dream like for me dream maddie was on stage because he was <laughs> first and i was like oh i don't want to be first I was like, oh, God, please don't call me. Please don't call me first. And they called me. I was like, yes. And then Maddie yeah. said to Tom, he had fun. He got his, you know, his toy story. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm energized. So Dream Maddie, you know, he, he's outside. He's real. You know? He's, he's real. reality. He's yeah. Real. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad I can I can bring that to life. Hopefully Mike agrees. You know, it's <laughs> the only thing you can hope for. <laughs> All right. Those are just some before we begins. Let's talk about what we're playing. Cog, what's been in your Xbox, PlayStation, Switch? What have, what have you been gaming around with? Maybe the PC? Yeah, I've been all over the place, man. It's, it's right. been so many things. All right, so let's start first start with Xbox. Obviously, I'm st- Phoenix Point. Jesus, mm. I can't. I'm going to talk. I want to talk about my other Xbox game, but it's my Game Pass pick of the week, so I'm not going to you know get okay. too deep in that. But um, that's another one. 
And then, oh, of course, Back for Blood. That's still going on, right? Mm. So that's been that. Switch is popping for me right now. That Metroid Dread, man. Yeah, I'm really, it's a good one. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I've been messing around with that. And then um, on, I've been doing my VR thing, man. I've been doing, I've been really doing my VR thing. I, I went back to, um, like I told you, Star Wars Immortal, but there's a new, not a new one. What it is, I'm late to, to Oculus Quest 2 VR. Mm. So there's a lot of little gems I missed and people are giving me all these recommendations. And there's this one, it's educational and it's called um, Traveling While Black. Bro, that mm. thing had me... I was just really? like, yeah, you know what it is? It's it's basically recounting events and then like you like literally in a world in a different time frame and you've mm-hmm. got like black skin, you know what I'm saying, kind of thing. Yeah, and yeah. It puts you in the back of the book. It's doing the thing. And it's like, yo, right. this is how it used to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. so yeah, it, it's like, put it this way. It, it showed me the potential of VR. And I know we're going to talk about VR. <laughs> um, in uh, educational space because if I was a kid, I'll be real. I was that kid when you know the kids they'd be like, "It's time to go to the museum and learn." Mm. Uh, you know, I wasn't really into Sneak it. But the Game Boy, <laughs> yeah, you know, you got your little Vito on the side, whatever it is, yeah. right? Because it's like you just wasn't in tune. Because again, you can't relate. Yeah, but yeah. I think this is a teaching tool. So those, those are kind of what I've been rocking with. And I got I was been playing my PlayStation in a while. I gotta start. I gotta boot up my PS Five. It really rocked in a while. But what, what you been playing? Yeah, for me, I've been reviewing a couple of games. Unfortunately, I can't label them here. Yeah. Uh, the, the main one I've been playing that I can talk about, though, is uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba, the Hinokami Chronicles. <laughs> okay. okay. I love Demon Slayer. I love me some Demon Slayer. So mm-hmm. new game comes out. It's come from Cyber Connect mm-hmm. 2, responsible for recently Dragon Ball Z Kakarot before that. Mm-hmm. They earned their chops with the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm series. At times, making parts of the Naruto show better in game than okay. actually the uh, the show itself, wow. which I thought was a, a tip of the cap to their their stellar work on recreating uh, pivotal moments in it, and of course, condensing the story. Okay. I remember playing. I want to say it was Ultimate Ninja Storm three story and being really moved by it. I was like, this is mm-hmm. really good because Naruto is known for a lot of bloat. Yeah. With that said. Demon Slayer comes out, one of the highest grossing anime. So, of course, it's going to get its own 3D fighting game. Cyber Connect, proven talent. It's kind of what you'd expect. Very flashy, very pretty. Animations are phenomenal. Kind of thin character cast here to play around with. But the trade off is unlike other Cyber Connect games, the combat actually has some depth here, okay. which I was happy to see. One of the things I liked was. Rather, one thing I didn't like in the Ultimate Ninja Storm games was like the heavy dependency on the substitution jutsus teleporting behind each other constantly. This game has a a parry system. So if you time those deflections, you can create some space. There's a it's very simple to pick up and play because there's an attack button. There's a skill button, but there is also a combo limit. So you can't just chain people endlessly like in the Ultimate Ninja Storm games and take out all their health. You can probably take out half health tops if you're doing decent. Gotcha. Um, so you've got your support character. You've got the attack button, skill button. Blocking is really important, of course. Of course. And all of this melds together where there's a really good back and forth in this game. Again, compared to previous Cyber Connect games, you know, I've played the Ultimate Ninja Storm games a lot mm-hmm. and they were fun, flashy, but I don't think they were competitive. Not that this is going to be competitive like Mortal Kombat or something, right. but I think they did a really good job here making something deeper than it really had to be. Okay. Otherwise, the story, it's told across, I believe, eight chapters. It's an abridged version of the first season of the anime and the, okay. the movie Mugen Train, which just came out a couple months ago. Um, not impressed, really. I, I think they kind of dropped the ball here. It It's one of those games that... Have you ever played those anime games where they kind of just force fights and they and they feel yeah, very out of place yeah, and janky? Yeah. It does a lot of that. Okay. okay. And um, it tries to have like mini boss fights and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. It just would have been so much better, I think, as a 3D action adventure game rather than oh. trying to make it a 3D fighter. I think that's where they went wrong because okay. the the framework that they have or they they have these it's called adventure mode so you're running around these areas right but then you'll suddenly get stopped for fights and it'll transition to a 3d fighter yep yep i know the type yeah and it just doesn't work doesn't feel good there's no flow to it and i think the game would work best in a situation where it was a 3d action adventure game sure it's not like the 
in that open world run around before you go to the 3D fight, it's not like the random JRPG randomized pop-up fight where a guy appear, or it's like you go to different locales and then a specific event triggers to fight. Oh, no, like you'll be walking around and it, it's, I guess, specifically set, but I'll be like walking around the forest and someone will jump out of a tree and, and, and it'll oh, kind of play like a yeah, mini, like not cutscene, but you'll see like, okay, we have to fight here. There's no right. running around you. There's gotcha. no like objects in the world that you interact with to start fights. It's like, no, he dropped in. You're going to fight. Gotcha. That type of thing. Okay. And so uh, if you love the anime like I do, it's tolerable. But otherwise, it's, it, it is what it is. It's kind of what I expected. I enjoy it. Uh, so I've been playing that a little bit, just gradually tapping through it. Mm-hmm. Um, I did betray my promise. I, I'm calling myself out here. I said, I said support Japanese games on Xbox. Got this one on PlayStation 5. Okay. My only excuse before anyone could call me out. You support the devs. Is, yeah, 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 I'm not supporting the devs, right? Uh, I'm over here on PlayStation. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I am a big believer in you go where your friends are for fighting games. So no when, I, when I have sure. four friends get it over there, I was like, okay, we got to. We got to go with PlayStation. So just so people know, yeah. I'm conscious and I'm holding myself accountable here. No, no, that's real. Plus that I platinum don't. trophy. But, Plus know. that platinum trophy. Listen, <laughs> I told you the rules are the rules of engagement. An ecosystem, right? Mm-hmm. That, that, that qualifies the ecosystem. You know what I'm saying? You had trophies over there. and you're fr- Fighting games, you have to go where the homies are. Like, that's just a fact. Like, yeah. it's the same way. The way you feel about that is how I feel about Tekken. And I remember we had made that decision. I was like, all right, when well, we doing the Tekken 7? Because I was like, yo, PlayStation got all the extras. And they got the C, the, the music. Mm-hmm. We was like, yeah, we we will go on PlayStation for that yeah. one. So I was yeah. like, all right, cool, cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, What's yeah, the controller, I, man? I, I like Xbox yeah, I feel, new controller. But I'm with you. I always fighter. feel PlayStation is... The, the segmented D-pad yep. is so much better for fighting, in my opinion. They've improved agree. Xbox. Don't get me wrong. I can still do it. You know what I'm saying? I got my almost my I think I, my, my version of Platinum on Tekken 7 on, on Xbox. But um, yeah, I've always felt for fighting the PlayStation controller superior. Yeah, I agree entirely. So that's what I've been playing. I'll have more in next week's episode to talk about what I'm mostly playing this week. So I'll share that then. But for now, it's review time. No and I'm buckling down. Buckling down. Time for warm up questions from the audience. James Donovan is our first one. What's up, Double D boys? I have a very simple question for you. Xbox mini fridge, smash or pass? Personally, I like it and would definitely order one if my living situation warranted a mini fridge. Thanks and hope you fellas have a plain Greek yogurt kind of day. I like Greek yogurt. I don't know. I enjoy it. So this yeah. is, that's kind of you wishing me a good day. In my <laughs> I like, I, but I'm with him though. I, I'm not on the plane. <laughs> mm. I, I like the one with either the fruit on the bottom or the mix or the Chibani. Okay. Like, I'm a Chibani kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Mixed. So, yeah, the mix. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But salute, salute them. Yeah. With the fridge, man. Yeah. I mean, it's just cool again. Mm. I like the, you know, they embrace the meme, they oh, have yeah. fun. Look, I, I'd put that joint back there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, how, how many drinks can I put in there? You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. see the thing. I th- they said they could fit a, they could fit a Series X in there, legit, right? Yeah, yeah. There was a. I think Tom Warren posted a video of a Series X within the Series X fridge. I was like, wow, this is just yeah. this is off the chain now. <laughs> yeah, like I, I mean, it's it, it's silly, but yeah, I, I I like it. I do like it. What about you? Would you, if you if the scalpers didn't get it, would you? Have, uh, I was gonna say this? scalpers got this one. And it was going for three hundred dollars, and then you start to look up, thanks to Fighting Cowboy, because he was he was posting pictures of it. How what you can get for a actual three hundred dollar mini fridge, dude? You, you it's it's impressive what brand power can do because some of these three hundred dollar mini fridges are packing, <laughs> and it's it's impressive. It is impressive the amount of drinks you can fit in there. It's like wow. And then people are charging three hundred dollars because that because it looks like a damn Xbox, and it's probably smaller, right? Yeah, it, no, it is one hundred percent smaller. Yeah, one hundred percent smaller. So yeah, it was going for a hundred dollars over on Target for those who didn't know. Mm-hmm. Came and went. It's getting scalped yeah. already. All over. All over. And uh, for me, it was one of those things where I used to have the Nuka Cola mini fridge from Fallout. Fire! It broke. Oh. It broke. I shouldn't have sold it though, or got rid of it. I think I threw it out because it completely broke. Started leaking. But dude, yeah. that thing's worth hundreds now because it, it's, bit, yeah, it's, it's so rare mm-hmm. and uh, it's hard to find. I remember what my parents got it for me for uh, I got my parents got me for me for Christmas. It and, was like a store purchase. Uh, yeah, Bethesda's online store was selling online it. store for an okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, okay. dude. I I I love that thing. It got uh, so uh, much uh, use. Having a mini fridge in my bedroom was a dream come true for when I was a kid. Uh, so nice, but then it broke. 
But not only that, man, just like every other branded mini fridge, it was tiny. I was yeah. holding like two yogurts and like four water bottles in there. And it, was just, <laughs> it was a sad ass mini fridge. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. As far as like usage, yeah, like yeah. practicality, yeah, I, I yeah. can totally hear you on that. But it's just, it just looks so cool. Mm-hmm. So you just deal with it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I'm personally passing on it. Hey, if Xbox wants to send one through, we'll yeah. find we'll find a home for it here in this room. Yeah. So, man, the Duke, Duke boys ain't gonna say no. <laughs> <laughs> We're for sale. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's a sellout in this year. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> All right, number two comes from Adam Kynaston. Dukies, do you think it's possible that Halo Infinite will chart on MPD? With the disparity between the number of Game Pass subscribers and the number of consoles sold, I'm hoping it's possible. I just want some good news for Xbox sales-wise. I feel like it's been a while. Show is getting better every single week. I love you both. That's some passion right there That's at the end. Passion. Salute to Adam. I love this question, and I love my co-host, Maddie, for picking it because... um. Yeah, man, like this is this is so intriguing to me. This is the question I have. Like, this is my only what I want to say, like skeptical question. Like, how do single player games do? And we do know, obviously, with with, with Halo and stuff like Mm -hmm. the campaign component. Right. And, And we know multiplayer is free. So I am very curious. Physical sales like, you know, do, do people run out and still get it right that that is the question and to me i felt like multiplayer games that kind of is a no-brainer that you know for the most part people are like hey it's in there you know we, we, we're not necessarily gonna have to buy it but i, I am curious man i this is it's, it's, the second one for me is starfield like i want to know if those even chart and like i said if it doesn't chart, it's not like oh my god doom and gloom the world is over mm-hmm. and, you know because at the end of the day you know my my thing is to promote Game Pass subscriptions is probably their ultimate goal. That's what they would prefer. But right. I, I do want to see, you know, if that charts in any way, how that relates to the market. What about you in reference to this? Yeah, I, I think it's interesting. I think it will chart. I, I feel okay. pretty confident about that because I think the Halo campaign matters a lot more than people give it credit for. Uh, I remember when Chris and I were talking about it a lot. You know, you you really look at some of the issues that Halo 5 had and a lot of its criticisms all boil down to its campaign and how much it soured that game. So I look at that as a, a true statement to how important it is to get it right. Only thing I do wonder about is uh, how many physical sales will occur because I think a lot of these sales will come through the well it's free I'm going to try it out you download the multiplayer and then one day you go I want a little bit more of this and you get the campaign but also I just think there's a heritage a legacy there where people are going to want to see this story and see what it's all about and and they'll be willing to pay for it no doubt I I have I have zero worries about that I think it will chart will it skyrocket to the top that would be a surprising be reveal. Surprised. That would be very surprising. And mm-hmm. it would tell a, a strong story about Halo, but also that Game Pass for certain games will not prevent you from being a number one charter. I think yeah. Starfield will also be a game that 100% sells really well. Yeah, uh, I, just, I, wanna, I can't see it not doing well. I Sorry, wanna, I want, I want, yeah, I definitely want to see that. It, it, I mean, you're making good points. You're getting good points. The last one I remember that like, launched in game pass but this was very early it was like state of decay 2 i believe mm. state of decay 2 you know launching game was and was like number one mpd and we had those those guys on as well nice so that's I, gotta be I was, such a good feeling you get that game pass money and then you chart number one <laughs> bro it was like one of our f- most fun episodes we had richard fogey on who was at the time director of uh, undead labs he was there for the first one and the second one mm. he's actually now with um strain they got the studio okay and um what you call it a uh, possibility i forgot the name the one that ryan we talked yeah, about yeah. last week but um yeah man like so that was a huge thing to be like yo how does it feel like yo you know that kind of thing so it is curious. Now, since then, we have not seen that. You know what I'm saying? So I am curious, does Halo, does Starfield? But you may be right. Like, those may be the ones that that, yeah. that do crack that uh, that 10. Yeah, again, I, I don't think it'll be number one. But I, right. I'd be shocked if Halo Infinite doesn't chart. There's just so much anticipation. And we'll get into the reveal yeah. event for that soon. But I think once that's shown again and people are reminded of the Halo campaign, which they've probably forgotten about at this point in time, like oh yeah yeah i'm gonna get that yeah oh yeah. absolutely oh, yeah. so time will tell on that great writing adam let's move on to will han what up duke bros i have to ask what's your opinion on any liquids or foods to get you jump started for your day as a young adult myself 
I've really been getting into drinking coffee and just black, no creamer or sweetener, maybe an apple once in a while. Do you occasionally indulge in a latte or caffeinated drink to help wake you up or do you just power through it? Thanks for the content, my dudes. Keep up the great work. Mm, good question, Will Han. Um, yeah, actually, what's funny is your choices are kind of like exactly what I do or used to do. So, mm-hmm. yeah, first of all, I actually am a big latte guy. So I used to, I definitely would do that. Just kind of jump style as a personal podcast a lot. <laughs> you know, you sometimes you need that to get the energy, the juices flowing. Now I'm gonna do a little plug advanced so yeah I, you know mm-hmm. i've been nice to y'all mm-hmm. <laughs> no but i truly do like the product it, it's very a lot of all natural they do a lot of um clinical studies so like they're one of the most transparent brands and how, what sold me i'm gonna be honest like i'm not into all that you know gamer sup i mean no disrespect to the, the company but gamer supplement stuff you know yeah, yeah. and it's i'm not into that i'm like man that look kind of fogazy to me i, I don't know right mm-hmm. But I got to shout out my boy, my last word co-host, Ebontis. He is the most finicky person I know. Like, I met this man. <laughs> this man won't put condiments on food. He won't put ketchup <laughs> on hot Bro, he's bad. He won't put ketchup on hot dogs. He he is uh, the guy that reads the label. He's like that guy. Well, right? I read the labels, but I like but the like, condiments. Yeah, thank you. See, you're a known person. <laughs> shout, <laughs> shout out to you. I love you. But um, at the end of the day, I'm like, I see E go so hard for advance. I'm like... He probably getting a bag from mm, his fans. That's mm. all it says. And he was like, nah. And he, he showed me, sent me a whole bunch of information. And it a lot of it is like green tea, natural caffeine stuff. And um, I've been using their energy drink uh, line at the gym. Absolutely love it. And their focus line at at, at the um, you know, before a show and stuff. And yeah. I gotta be honest, man, I huge fan. So Right now, you know, I'm definitely recommend them. I, I, a, lot, a lot of positive feedback. I don't get the jitters. I don't get that. Uh, usually when you do uh, either sometimes a pre-workout, you get this uh, beta adenine kind of jittery feeling oh, and tingling. It sucks. Yeah, I don't get any of that. I've had yeah. some of my best workouts. Your boy outside looking right now. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm getting back post-COVID shape. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Pre-COVID shape. So, um, yeah, that that's usually my thing. Prior to that, it was just a regular latte or whatever. What about you? Like, do you indulge in any of that stuff or do you were you a caffeine guy like where you at well i am all natural natural no coffee in my body whatsoever i don't do any energy drinks none of that stuff so just know when i'm i'm out here off the walls it's all that's all me now i yeah Yeah. i i take a little pride in that you know i i and honestly a lot of times like today i'm running on five hours of sleep so it's just like you know, I just got a lot of energy to spare, I think. <laughs> Listen, no, that youth, man, take advantage. Yeah, take that's advantage. what I thought. You know, I thought, why not, right? Why not? Yeah. So uh, I, I feel like I sit a lot uh, just given our jobs. You know, I go to the gym most days, but um, I don't think I need like energy drinks or caffeine that needs to just get my heart pumping when I'm literally sitting still. I think I provide that good energy mm-hmm. right now where uh, it's not necessary. So for me, like the way I start my day, I like a good protein shake. Now, Cog, you slandered me a little bit when I was like, yeah, I got the premier protein to start my day. You know, I got I got all max. I got a real <laughs> true premium powder. But when I told you I got premier protein, you were like, OK, whatever works for you. And I was like, I was like, what? <laughs> I, was like, like, what? I, I, I want to do you like that. My man had that Walmart protein. <laughs> I was just like, I right, man. You know what I'm saying? Lo- like, long, you long, long, you long, you long, 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 you for your, for your budget grind. I, think you I was like, yeah, yeah right? man. <laughs> Listen, I understand, bro. Protein is expensive. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> At the end of the day, if it works for you, <laughs> it's all good. I'm just saying, when you're ready to level up, you holler at your oh, boy, and I'm, I'm going to get you right. I'm going to get here's you the thing. right. Yeah. It's a primer to start my day. You know, do <laughs> All I right, need, true, true, do true, I true, need, true. Like, this is not, yo, look, if, if you're out there drinking Premier Proteins after a nice workout, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I'm just going to let you know right now. Do not drink the prepackaged stuff. Get that real authentic powder, right? Like, okay, I use okay. Olmax. I weigh 170 now. I was 130. In 2018, we're doing we're doing good. Okay, no, no, salute, salute. Yeah, no, you, you're doing good. it the right way. And I, I remember I told you my, my history is kind of similar to yours. I was a super. I gotta send you pics. Like I was a super. No, you showed me at the uh, at the Mexican restaurant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Mexican, yeah, yeah. I did show. Yeah, 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 bro. Like 
yeah, I was. It, it's it's a gradual thing over years. A five to ten pound mm-hmm. here. If I, you know, it's just gra- It's slow when you're doing things naturally in the right way. It's yeah. slow. That's how it's oh, supposed yeah. to be, right? So no, it, I did literally the same thing. I, I would have my my little, you know, off brand proteins. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Doing free like calories, this. free protein, yeah. why not? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. but like I said, from there, all the only, only adjustment I made is what I told you when we were in person was that when I really wanted to make a more serious bulk, I really included casein. Casein mm. was the difference maker because I really wanted to bulk at one point. And I said, okay, casein at night, because remember, while you're sleeping, the body is fasting. There's nothing going into your body at that point. Where casein is slow digesting. So while you're sleeping, you're getting a steady stream of protein. And then the first thing I would do, wake up in the morning, whey protein before breakfast. And then mm-hmm. breakfast well, an hour later, and I'm ready to go. So I'm constantly, because my, I, I was like, you, my metabolism was so high. Yeah. When I was, I would eat. I was greedy when I was young. I was skinny. <laughs> when, when, yeah, dude, I, I was the same. I was just, I was around my friends, just eating everything in sight. Nothing was happening. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I understand. So yeah, for me, uh, nothing special to start my day outside of a nice Walmart protein shake. No doubt. Shout yeah. out to Walmart. <laughs> Shout out to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Number four comes from Josh Correa. Mm-hmm. Hey Dukes, I hope you had a great week. So I have a controversial question this week. With Apple unveiling the new M1 Pro and M1 Max chips for their new iMac Pro laptops this week, what are the chances that xCloud Gaming will come to Apple laptops and desktops? With the specs of these chips being impressive, I was wondering how xCloud Gaming would look on a new iMac Pro specifically. Thanks, I have a cold, dry, and flavorous burger type of day. Shout out to Ivantis, right? That's an Ivantis burger, yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to love listening to this episode. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Shout out to you, Josh. Um, saw this question, and it it just pains me to say that I, I don't think Sally is going to be able to take advantage of this new tech because um, the, from my understanding, again, correct me if I'm wrong, Comic Boys, but I mm. believe, shout out to the great whole law, um, you know, the way the Apple and Microsoft – X cloud fiasco was settled was through the browser end, right? Yeah. So that's the way they're implemented. So it's not a local implementation of X cloud. So in my opinion, even though it works, it probably won't be, I don't know if there's any testing that's out right now versus a local version versus a browser version, but I'm going to assume the local version, which would utilize more of the hardware processing power of, of the device would be more of the superior version. So yeah, it's a shame because you know, you really want them to have an app, a local app on the device to really take advantage of it. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, what do you think as far as uh, are you more of a Mac Apple guy? Or as far as yeah, name? when it comes to, yeah. you know, the, the phones and whatnot, I'm yeah. definitely more of an Apple person. My, my girlfriend works at Apple, so I was okay. kind of uh, clued in on this. And no, 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 no. Uh, and yeah, I was I was pretty excited about it when I saw it because it does look like Apple can actually crack into gaming a little bit more. We're seeing them do that with apple arcade and they're getting some cool stuff like i think the game's called fantasian which okay. is by the studio that made lost odyssey they've gone and oh. decided for whatever reason because they they hate me uh to go and make <laughs> mobile games only but they okay. made this cool looking jrpg called fantasian and that's over on apple arcade and they have a sonic game over there which if you if you really hate yourself you can play that uh but there's <laughs> there's plenty of other plenty of other games come on apple arcade there's nba 2k over there so what? uh yeah you can yeah there's yeah apple's uh, getting a little more serious about gaming it's i think why they kept microsoft off their devices because they want to do something for their own now when you look at the power of these chips um you can customize up to 16 or 64 gigabytes of, of ram oh, um wow. which is which is insane right mm-hmm. um for for mac by the way mm-hmm. um and then they have the 120 hertz screen and, and you look mm. at the power of the new chips they they, they got a lot going for them where I think they're going to try to crack into the space, but I, I'm curious how they're going to do it. I don't know if it's going to be strictly through Apple Arcade or if they're going to sort of embrace other teams, if you will. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. Xbox is off the table, but like, how are they going to yeah. partner up with Steam? All that stuff I, I, I look at. Um, but I don't think xCloud Gaming will be, will be coming along outside of the yeah. browser. I agree. I agree. That that was their only way into the ecosystem and they had to do the back end legality way. So, yeah, yeah I think that's that's where it's going to stay at. And, and not only that, but, you know, I don't think the, the specs matter at that point because it's just going to be streaming. So, yeah, that's why we're, we're, we're seeing point. next gen games going to be running on Xbox One because <laughs> good point. that's the, the power of the cloud. But great write in, Josh. Great thought, too. Mm-hmm. Last 
little warm-up question. We'll get into the news. Adam Thim writes in, hey, Crunchy Maddie and Smooth Cog. Recently, I brought I watched mad breakdowns on Battlefield 2042's beta, and oh boy, is this game looking like a hot mess. With the game seemingly on track for a November launch, my question is, does this game seem like it's going to be a giant disaster? Also, Maddie, do you still want this game on Game Pass Day 1, especially with your criticism of buggy games bringing down the quality of Game Pass? Thanks, and I hope you have a no toilet paper in the bathroom type of day. P.S. When will you bring Actman on? Yo, I love Actman. That'd be sick. Yeah, so that'd be lit. Like, Come on, no toilet in the bathroom? Come on, Yeah, man. that's... I've been there. That's a <laughs> horrible there. feeling there. Yeah, Bro, it's, that's, that's hard, especially the public joints. When mm-hmm. you go to public, you like, oh, no. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Then, then you're really out the... <laughs> oh, yeah, you out of pocket, for real. Um, Yeah, man. Battlefield, battlefield, battlefield. So torn, so torn. Because mm-hmm. um, I think visually it's just a beautiful game. You know, so I, I really do. I still still like it. You know, I still like a lot of the things. You know, shout out to your video. And I love my attachments on the fly, the big scale battle. But yeah, them, them, bugs, was, them bugs was outside. Mm-hmm. Them, them bugs mm-hmm. was there. You know, um, I don't know. And then they, they, they just made another, a recent announcement about that, that mode. It was kind of... Um, Hazard was, Zone. Yes, has its own. So you got that going on. It may be a situation, and I'm not going to say it's going to launch a hot mess, but it may be a situation that it's going to just like improve over time if they don't like nail it out the jump. Yeah. Yeah. Um. To his question, as far as him wanting you with the um day, day one, I will say this. If they don't, I think it'll come quicker than than normal. You know what I'm saying? If it, if it doesn't knock it out the park, if people are not really feeling it out the jump, you know, but I, ho- I hope they do put it in Game Pass, man. That would be a huge get. And we'll talk about, you know, the importance of these, you know, big games on Game Pass later with the other, other segments. But I hope they do. I hope mm-hmm. our EA takes the bag. What, what, what are you thinking? You know, especially with the whole buggy thing, we had that conversation. Yeah. Before. I guess I'll talk about them in tandem because sure. I think Xbox is going to still bring it to Game Pass day one. I'll talk about whether or not I want it in a sec, but mm-hmm. I think they're still going to do it, especially now if they're seeing, I got to be honest, the game's buggy. Uh, and if EA and DICE identify that, this may sound crazy, but they want it in Game Pass then. They've seen mm-hmm. what happens when they lose their player base with Battlefield Five, yeah, yeah, yeah. and what happens when they alienated players and when they didn't respond properly. They need as many players as they can. They need Battlefield 2042 to hit. Not because like anyone's in, in, in dire straits or anything, but they just need this game to hit, right? They want it to hit. It's their next big thing. It's, you know, from what I played, I thought it was great. There's just obviously a lot of bugs and technical issues. Their biggest excuse for this, they said this during my preview, they said this publicly, but not as loud, was this build was a number of months old. That was their, their go-to. However, as I looked around, on PC, for me, the, the bugs you can see in my videos or things like people floating outside the helicopter yeah, I had falling on the map. Yeah, just weird visual bugs like that. Yeah. But on consoles, it seemed to be far, far worse. It actually looked more like cyberpunk in a way where as we moved back those generations, you could see it getting worse and worse and worse. Very specific problems across platforms. And if cyberpunk taught us anything, we've just seen that the next gen versions got delayed and the amount mm-hmm. of fixes they've implemented and it's still kind of broken is this game needs more time in the oven. That's yes. just the simple fact of the matter. If you want a consistent or at least perform, it'll, uh, it can perform across all platforms. It needs more time. That much is obvious because the, the three months, if that was what it was like three months ago when they had made that build, and I, I'm sorry, but like it, it's, it's not in much better shape at this point in time. At least that's my read on the situation from what I know about gaming. But yeah. um, as for if I want it on, on Game Pass, I honestly, I go back and forth on it because Let's go. if it can land and it is solid absolutely mm-hmm. we're going to talk about game pass numbers in a bit and we've seen what happens when xbox lulls a little bit and they don't have those consistent big games where the numbers start to drop off clearly right. they need that so corporate stuff aside on hey what works for xbox mm-hmm. i always want quality games on game pass if battlefield is broken it pains me to say but no do not bring okay. it okay right now it doesn't look like if I were Xbox and I'm trying to quality check things, yeah. this would be the quality of a game I want on there. But maybe they see a build that we don't have access to. Again, you know, okay. we all got access to a build that's apparently multiple months old. So that's where I sort of sit on it. If it's going to stay this broken, no. Bring, bring stuff to Game Pass. You know, people are already waiting to bring stuff to your platform. Bring it to Game Pass when it's working. 
You know, no, absolutely. People cannot toss your trash on here or else the service is going to get a bad rep for its, its day one drops. Fortunately, Back for Blood has been great. It's like one of the top played games on Game Pass. Yes. It's doing exceptionally well. It's Steam player count. It's setting new peaks consistently. It's That's what you want. That's yes. what you want. A mm-hmm. big game. You're seeing it on TV. I'm seeing TV commercials and they're putting yes. that at the end. Bro. That's what you to, want. Not to cut you. Um. I was very impressed. I'm I'm a big, you know, Sunday football guy. Mm -hmm. I got the two TVs going, red zone. Like, I'm that guy. I got the the, the homies over. We're watching. We're going back and forth. So, bro, I was so impressed. I could not believe it. Prime spot, NFL game. I saw a back for butt blood commercial with the Game Pass logo at the end. Now I was like, what's this? Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, we actually promoting this amazing service on a worldwide scale? Very impressed. I want to see more of that. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what I want to see them keep doing. I think back for blood right now is the the peak example of what you want to see Xbox do with their day one Game Pass gets. Get a quality game that fits, works well across most platforms and let it rock of course this is withstanding developer choices like for example the way solo progression works that's not on xbox but on a technical level they can take a look at it they can test the game and make that call that's what i'm looking at but if a game's not good on a a level of its reviews or whatever that's a whole different conversation yeah that's a different conversation absolutely absolutely with that thank you for your write-ins we still have many more to go through (laughs) on top of a loaded week of news Cog, we've delayed long enough. Let's, Let's get, get into it. it. Number one, Xbox's 20th anniversary is quickly approaching on November 15th, and the team appears to have plans to celebrate. In an Xbox Wire post by Matt Booty, who is head of Xbox Game Studios, he reflected on the successful 2021 the team has enjoyed across games from their first party stable, reviewing well, the success of Game Pass, and so on. Of the most significant within his write-up are two aspects. First, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members will receive monthly multiplayer bonuses as part of their perks program starting when Halo Infinite releases December 8th this year. Secondly, and this one is the one that made headlines, is Xbox's announcement of yet another showcase-like event. The post states that there are clearly no new game announcements that will be made here, and that it will be a special look back at 20 years of Xbox with more details to share soon. The stream will be available on both YouTube and Twitch on November 15th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific Time, and 5 p.m. GMT. To make matters more interesting, Tom Henderson of DualShockers, who has a really strong track record of leaks, has stated he heard about a campaign showcase for Halo Infinite possibly taking place during this event. Here we go. Here Here we we go. go. And I want to let everyone know right now, we're doing an Avengers-like crossover for this episode. Yes, indeed. We are getting the Xbox Two boys on. It's going to be a nice four-person show. So look forward to that. It'll be myself, Cog, Jez Corden, Randall Thor. We'll be getting together to talk about whatever's shown off at this event on November 17th. That's when we record. So look forward to that. With that, Cog, let's talk about this 20th anniversary event. We just, funny enough, on DDU, we're talking about Xbox setting expectations and mm-hmm. where we're going to be at. They're saying no new game reveals. But what about them old game reveals? Yeah, yeah, you you know, I'm, I'm with you there. You know, that, that sets the stage. I think that, um, you know, what one thing I like, Booty doesn't come outside a lot. <laughs> he doesn't. I looked at his Twitter. I think the last time he tweeted was Bro, two years ago. He don't tweet a lot. He don't come outside a lot. And to me, this is significant because I'm like, all right, what, what's he what's he doing? What's he talking about? And, you know, look, it makes sense. You know, they want to sell. This is very important to them. They want to celebrate this anniversary from a nostalgic standpoint and then just to line everything up with the history. Right. And you said it best, like. It makes perfect sense if you're going to do this retrospective to look how where we've gone to where we've come. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It makes sense to say, OK, maybe we get that FPS boost, those some back compact games of requested things that people have wanted, you know. And again, setting expectation, no new game announcements. But that doesn't mean 
anything that was already announced mm-hmm. can't be shown additionally, right? Maybe this is that time you get that that Halo campaign at the end, you know, mm-hmm. more of a, in, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is the time. It's the feel-good time. It's November, November 15th. Great, great day, y'all. Hint, yeah. hint. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, like, this is what you do. You, you bring the feels. And to me, it's the perfect setup to now let the curtain back show a little more you know what i mean and hey if you want to show about or anything else i mean you know i wouldn't object <laughs> yeah yeah there's always that possibility isn't there that we, we see some of those other announced games because avowed they said they were showing it off soon mm-hmm. there has been rumblings of such a, a reveal so we'll, we'll see on that front. We'll see, we'll see, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. but definitely halo infinite like campaign Get the hype train going. You 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 lead right into you know it's November fifteenth. You lead right into December. Uh-huh. Keep that you know new cycle popping. Yeah, yeah. you see the twenties all over the place. You're seeing everything going. You're getting the base you know really pumped. Up. And last point, and I know we're gonna touch on this again about Game Pass stuff. You know you get anticipation. To, for people to be like, oh yeah, it's coming. That's right. It's so quick. Mm-hmm. December. You know what? Like your boys that was unsubscribed, they'd be like, yo, you know what? Let me get this in now yeah, before. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That kind of thing. Which thing? Yeah, I think with the Halo campaign reveal, that that just makes too much sense at this point in time. Uh, it's the same anniversary being shared for both Xbox and Halo Combat Evolved. So why not re-reveal the campaign there? However, I have one gripe with that. Oh, I think that's a little too late. I know it works on a date, but when you got December 8th is the release date and we got less than a month ago and you're showing the campaign again. It just seems a little too close where it's like, OK, how, how much are you hiding from us? I'm sorry. I just I hate to be that guy. I know you're probably tired of me, <laughs> but I just I can't help but worry a little bit. Just I think it'll look great, but I just can't help but worry of the timing of it all. Unless uh-huh. unless they do some type of a preview, which Xbox has been known to do some previews with we did it with Forza, we did it with Psychonauts over on my channel. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping they do the same with Halo to instill that public confidence. It's not just showing us what we want to see for like 15 minutes on a little stream and then see at the launch in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, all we got is last August. I'm mm-hmm. really crossing my fingers that they either do a little bit more to bring some confidence to the table on the campaign front outside wow. of its gameplay. Gameplay wow. is good, but I just, I think that's a little too late for my are taste. You in, are you implying that it might be coming in hot? Are you implying? <laughs> they kind of said it's like landing a flight. So I don't know if that's even my words, but yeah, it's, it's um, a little too close for me. I yeah. Think. I, I'll be honest. I, I highly doubt they give any type of, public facing campaign mm. touching preview uh, i i feel influencers you know what i'm saying you you know mr mr maddie play oh of course, of course. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I could see that behind the scene or something like that <laughs> all the top guys but public nah this thing coming in too high in oh my yeah opinion. sorry no i didn't i, I don't oh, know okay. if i said that yeah i didn't mean public. Okay. i just meant in, influ- influence oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah I, i'm confident no y'all gonna get that they mm. got to they got to they, you gotta Bro, there's only so much times you can hide. The game will come out, right? That's what I'm saying. I I feel very confident in Halo Infinite in a lot of ways, like especially after that last flight preview with Big Team Battle. My God, I I, I was saying to you on on DDU, I think it was, I was like, I still think about it. Like it's, it was such a fun time. So I'm not worried it's going to be fun, but like we just need to, we really need to see and believe for the campaign. Again, when you're waiting that long, you just, a little bit of worry oh, yeah. there for me. No, absolutely. You're absolutely right. I, I'm with you. I think that goes down. I will say on the public side, though, you're probably going to get another multiplayer flight. Because remember, they still said they got oh, yeah. one more. They said it wasn't complete. Mm-hmm. So I could see like another announcement of the final one. Yeah. You know, cool. whatever, whatever. But here's one more map. And remember, they do got to land the plane on an infrastructure level with the servers before they got, they cannot have a master chief collection situation. Mm-hmm. They got to keep doing it. So yep. I see that for sure, but yeah, I'm with you. I think you get everything you, you, you asked for there. On the topic of halo, before we move on to other things we can see at this event, what do you think of game pass ultimate members receiving monthly multiplayer oh, yeah. bonuses? What's a good way to get people to sign up than that, right? The, the free yeah. to play multiplayer, you, you get them into game pass. Now they've got the campaign too. 
the way yeah. to drive some subscribers, which it seems like they need. Uh, mm -hmm. But what do you think is going to be a part of these perks? Is it going to be maybe bonus challenges because all progression is through challenges? Do you think it's going to be cosmetics? Yeah, that's a good point. And and this is now this is where Cog's a little worried. Just a little. Okay. No, I, well, I should say worry. You, I'm going to be concerned. My eyebrow. Uh, I just want to know because again, I understand you want to incentivize ultimate you want to incentivize people to have a server i get that right mm -hmm. but i want to know what the determination of this is is it extra challenges is it exclusive suits because mm. <laughs> exclude like it, it's just interest now again they don't affect gameplay so i'm not going to get too crazy right but at the end of the day I w it, they, they got to be careful because we know how the online community is the media social media if something is too egregious, egregious they're going to be held to that. They're going to be like, yo, what's, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Kind yeah. of thing. Now, again, um, I got to see. I got to see. Because it's like, what if it's like, I try to think of something that I would be like, I mean, it's not going to affect me because I'm an ultimate subscriber. So I'm right. fine. But I'm trying to think of not me, the person who's not in Game Pass. And what if it's something like really cool? Mm. And you like, damn, if I don't got Game Pass, I can't get to mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, again, I'm good. I'm in. And they got to incentivize. But where do you feel? Do you think, think there's any risk for a slippery slope? Or you think uh, maybe I'm blowing it out of proportion a little bit too I, uh, much? It's just, yeah. I got to do with the, the cog impression, a little pushback. I think no, okay, um, let's go, let's go, let's go. I, I look at it this way. I think what will happen is probably, if, let's say they unlock, there's a new suit coming, right? Mm -hmm. I think maybe what will happen is if you're a Game Pass Ultimate subscriber, you'll get that suit already. If you're not and you're playing free to play, you can either pay for it individually or you can earn it through in-game currency. OK, a little bit idealistic, I understand. But okay. I, I feel like unless they my only concern, as with all of the monetization, is mm -hmm. if they started like jamming gameplay components in any of them whatsoever. Right. That's right. something that we've seen multiple developers walk back on. 76 did this. We just yes. saw Avengers do this by the yes. way and, and crystal dynamics still has yet to respond to those concerns mm -hmm. while they announced like a new captain america halloween costume they they're burying their head right in the sand with that one so again i i just i like 343 but i do not trust these companies at all when it comes to them saying we promise no gameplay stuff it's like we promise until three years from now when most of you don't give a fuck that we're not going to put gameplay <laughs> stuff in there that's what happens bro what if they got the warhawk with the gold rims yeah <laughs> What if that has more armor on it? Who what knows? If it, you, know what you, you got you got you got to be cognizant. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Now, now the thing is, as a Destiny player, what Destiny does is they'll have like the free track, almost like the battle pass track, right? right? And they'll show right. you the rewards, whatever. And then like the cool stuff is the the free guy got to grind a little low, longer to get that. Mm. Whereas like the the person who paid for the season pass, it has that 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 premium track. They'll get it as soon as they log in. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They'll get the skin, the cosmetic, and all this other stuff. So it is interesting because I know how social media is. Oh, yeah. And if something is super cool, they just got to be careful what, mm -hmm. what, what type of smoke they might get. Because if I we run like it around or, or go warhogs, <laughs> <laughs> bro, well, I'm that's the other thing. If it starts to get to the point of ridiculous ridiculousness, too, with its uh, cosmetics, that's that's also a dangerous game to play with Halo it, it, when, when you see that type of stuff. So did you see the Rockstar joints? Did you see the the Rockstar, um, the battle rifle, the war? Did you oh, see no. with the gold? Bro, it's looking very Iron Lord-ish. Oh. Very, very, bro, the, 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 the skins fire it's like yeah rockstar I'm, I'm just saying i'm just saying. it's something to be aware of as it's always to be cognizant of. yeah exactly. beyond halo which i think is pretty much a guarantee we're thinking back compact games rise oh yeah certainly i mean you looked at some of the branding they've done and I, I think it could just be marketing i'm not going to get too overhyped on it but you look at the anniversary celebration key art which is of the og xbox dashboard <laughs> Oh, sorry, I choked on my own spit there. Yeah. You look at um, you look at the Xbox website. You've got the Xbox 360, like old school dashboard over there. Oh, I yeah. mean, dude, they're they're going in on that nostalgia. Of course, 20th anniversary, celebrate your heritage. But I mean, it's been a while, man. It has it's time. It has. It's time. It's time. Yeah, it's it definitely time, man. So many things. It would be cool if like something really requested that hasn't come can break through and they mm. found a way right and it, it, it like like what we did again we had that amazing ultimate we had that list right what if any one of our games 
was like, yo, that Ninja Turtle sign. Yeah, imagine that. Oh my <laughs> you god. You know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. would go crazy, bro. Just yeah. to see your face and your reaction to that. Like I, that would be, you know, they gave me a fifty six. <laughs> All like, I'm saying yeah. is, just give me my death loop or death row. Oh, yeah. not death, death row. Not, yeah, not, yeah, not yeah. death loop. I, I I hate that oh, yeah. game. <laughs> death row though. Death row. Oh my god. Dude, Bro. Little, it's here. They did NFL 2K5. <laughs> oh, I go crazy. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. I know it's not happening, but hey, but it's still yeah. hope. You know, you wait. You never know. Yeah. 2K gets involved. What's going? You hear what's going on with with um with, with uh, FIFA? FIFA? Yeah, the license it looks like the the grip of EA is loosening. Mm. And what I'm seeing, we seen the MLB start with loosening the grip and wanting it to be out no more exclusive to one platform. Got that NFL one- 2K. Bro, I'm, I know the NFL would like a bag. I'm just saying, yeah. more more licenses or more games means more money because those those deals may be antiquated. So I'm still, I mean, it's still a way down the road, 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 but hey, it gives me hope. It's a glimmer of mm-hmm. hope down the road. You you know, on a side note, you'd think that FIFA would want to really lock down their partnership with EA after you see what Konami just did with their free to play football game. You're like, God, what is this monstrosity? <laughs> like, we're gonna go stick with the guys who have at least been doing like an all right job with things here. Mm-hmm. They're like they're they're trying to really yeah. milk them dry, and I, I respect it. They probably saw. I'm guessing they saw MLB maybe grow MLB through the show. the show and and through Game Pass and that stuff. And bro, they're looking huge. to do a similar thing. Look at Marvel, pop culture. They're out here like, hey, licenses are available. You want to make a turn base? You want to do this Midnight Suns? Mm-hmm. Drop us oh. a bag. We got you right. Like it, yeah. it, 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 it's a new day. And it, Jim Ryan's comments. We you know we talked about it, like. The, the console market, it, it, you know, that people want to go larger and everywhere. There is money to be made with pop culture and sports. Why not? Mm-hmm. I agree. What do you think of the potential of studio acquisitions here? I think it's very hard to imagine everything can synchronize this perfectly. But of course, mm-hmm. some folks are looking at Sega as an example of, hey, right, right, right. You, you know, there's so much heritage here. You got Jet Set Radio Future. Mm-hmm. You know, we, why can't we play this like definitive Xbox game yeah. Yeah. over on our series consoles? Like, mm-hmm. you know, how does that synchronize? I, I don't think it's going to happen, but I just want to get your two cents on it. Great question. And I thought the same thing, because to be honest, you know, booty doesn't come outside. <laughs> mm. And the last time he came outside, what I believe was a XO or post oh, exile yeah, yeah. and it was in exile and obsidian that was when we got it because it wasn't an e3 state yeah that was right? xo 19 right so he again he's so behind the scenes and, and and that's his department that's his baby so i was thinking mm. but then they set expectation here with this and he set expectation here because at the end of the day it's like hey no new games but it's a slim chance but i'm with you i i my gut is saying i just don't see the energy like it's going to happen, but I don't just think it's going to happen here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. So that's it where feels I'm at. like the potential to be too much in one day. I, I would yes. rather them spread the wealth. Like if you've got a studio yeah. acquisition announcement ready, like do it on a, on a different day. And, and if you've yes. got back and back games ready, like show those on the 20th anniversary. Yes. We'll talk I about agree. this in a much more extensive way, but I'm wondering mm-hmm. if something for fables on the way with what occurred <sighs> over on Twitter or the, uh, the, the, <sighs> the statement of something with a fable anniversary and then retraction. Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, we will. So I wonder what's going on there. Any other Xbox games? Do you think that we get updates across other Xbox Game Studios titles for this stream? Because they said it's a special look back at 20 mm-hmm. years of Xbox, right? Right, right. And right. they said they'll, they'll share more details soon. So I'm sh- we'll maybe have an idea even next week. Um, right. But I, I'm just I'll, wondering if, like, we talked to Vowed, but do you think there's other games that we see? Like Hellblade 2, maybe? I, my gut still is with um, Grub and jazz on on hellblade game awards hmm. I, i'm still there with them I, i'm still leaning in the, as far as the new stuff i'm i'm really not maybe one right but i still i think this is halo's day as far as the you know okay. what you know what has already been announced that it's coming kind of thing but the other thing i was thinking about was just like more gaps and filling more gaps in like the Bethesda catalog, that stuff that didn't have an FPS boost, mm. filling more gaps of other little auto HDR. Feel. Like, I think it's more that. And I don't want to get too crazy because I think they really yeah. want to put their, you know, cherry on the Sunday with Halo and maybe close this out. But hey, 
I am not opposed <laughs> to any Xbox Game Studio extra reveal, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, on this day. Like, I am yeah. not opposed to that. That would really, because you do want to set up the future. What else does the base need to be excited about, right? Moving forward. We came 20 years. This is what we did. But moving forward, yeah, one would be nice. One would be nice. So yeah. we'll see. I think you're spot on, though, especially mm -hmm. with what we just said about spreading the wealth. Yeah, let Halo have its day. Mm -hmm. I think it's also why we're probably not going to see any studio acquisitions is you just you yeah. cannot distract from Halo. You cannot. That is your yeah. flagship yeah. title for the year. It is uh, one of the most important game launches they've had in a very long time, even compared to something like Gears. Like this is mm -hmm. really, really important. They get it right. So they need all mm -hmm. eyes on it. So yeah, I think that's why back compat announcements make sense for this day. Like that's a thing that's quiet. It won't overtake Halo, but it's a, an addition to keep Xbox in the news cycle. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree with you entirely. I think it's Halo's day. And with that, one last question for you. Do you think uh, Game Pass additions to the library to celebrate the anniversary? Yeah, gotta we, we, yeah we got to. That, that makes sense. I'm with you there. Gotta have some type of addition in, in that respect. Mm -hmm. and that, 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 that fills out, that rounds out the picture. Back compat, FPS boost a auto HDR, you know, um, a Game Pass edition, and then you know the Halo thing for the future. Get yeah. your hype for December. I, I'm it, that fits the the, the ecosystem yeah. of the of the event. All right, perfect. I agree with you. Dare I say that's like the new? Uh, what did you say about the the Forza gears and stuff like the burger? Oh, Big fries. Mac large fries in the shape. Yeah, I, th I think that's kind of <laughs> like the new version of Xbox with the FPS boost, new Game Pass yeah. edition, auto HDR. <laughs> that's what it is. And then we forget, right? Because uh, the event is November. When is uh, Forza is already out at that point, right? Forza will already be out at that point. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Is this the Halo Day? This yeah. the Halo Day? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, November 15th at 1 p.m. Eastern time, 10 a.m. Pacific time, yeah. 5 p.m. GMT on YouTube and Twitch. Yeah. I will likely be streaming this event if it's longer than oh, an hour. Sure. So sure. we'll see you there. Oh, I'm taking the day off. That's my day. Hell yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Number two, Game Pass made some noise this week. For once, though, it's not the best news for the exciting and growing service. In a new financial filing for Microsoft, they revealed that Game Pass growth is slower than the company had hoped for in the past year. For the past 12 months that ended on June 30th, Xbox Game Pass subscriber growth was up 37%. However, the company had set it at 48% for a growth goal. An estimation would set them around 20 million users by June of this year. In the company's prior fiscal year, running from mid-2019 through mid-2020, Game Pass subs were up 86%, exceeding a target of 71%. This becomes all the more curious when many in the audience are wondering what the Game Pass subscriber number is at, and the last we had heard about it was 18 million in January 2020. 21. Yeah, it's a big one. It's a mm. big one. Um, look, let, let's get right to it. You know, at the end of the day, growth is good. Let's just put that out. Any any type of growth is good. So that that's positive. But yeah. obviously, they had expectation of even higher, right? So to me, this is what I get from it. I look at this and I say, this really doubles down on kind of the things that we were talking about mm -hmm. as far as the need to feed that service with those AAA big titles. Maddie, you've been screaming it for the rooftop. You've been, you know, we had Grub on. Grub also said it. Grub actually had an amazing tweet about this. And it, it, it really denotes the power of when you have, again, the, when you have a, a AAA level game, it makes people want to go. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Outriders, MLB, the show. Top of the year, they're great. But since then, right? And then the way, I just think the way their calendar year was set up with Forza at the end, Halo at the end, I think this is another reason why publicly they have not come out and given the number, right? Because at the end of the day, my feeling is they want to talk after the big releases come out and then say, okay, this is where we are, yeah. you know? But I, I see you ready to jump in. But I, I mean, that, that's just where I'm at. I just think this... This really hammers home why those other games of those big games, those third are huge and they need to be consistent because if you want to keep people in, like you say, your boys are like, yo, I did what I had to do. I'm out. Mm -hmm. You got to keep people in and they know they want to keep that quarterly thing. But I'll give it to you. What, what do you think about these numbers and, and where things are at? This is great news. Yes. This is some of the best news you could hear, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Because they're growing, right? They know they're up. But they're yeah. like, okay, mm -hmm. how can we get this to grow more? 
Right. And for us, the consumers, that means many more games day one on Game Pass, right? which is really good to see. So you should be pleased that it's growing. Yes. But it's not growing explosively because what we're effectively seeing is I think Xbox did a little experiment. Okay, we've sort of loaded up the end of the year with Back for Blood, Age of Empires 4. Um, you can count Psychonauts 2 in that a little bit. Yeah. But um, of course, Forza and Halo being those big heavy hitters. And what they're going to see is effectively how heavy are those hitters? How many people do sign up for those? But they're also able to see, okay, so a summer with uh, Death Store wasn't in Game Pass, but um, The Ascent, Psychonauts 2, uh, these more niche titles. Niche games. What was it? We had, you know, Sable. Same. Um. What was the one we had with Lockbart? We, we Ben was strangling his wife. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Twelve minutes. Twelve minutes. Yes. Twelve minutes. 12 yeah, minutes. I love how that time it gets me to remember. Uh, no that's how I got me to remember. Yeah. I forgot the name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, creep. You, yeah. <laughs> when you called him creep, when he cut that, I died. Sorry. Like, wow. Lockbart. Okay. You're, you're, you're beast. <laughs> he is bad. But when you look at those smaller games, now Xbox knows like, okay, these are likely going to be more supplemental for us in the future. And I imagine their expectations were there. They're probably pleased with their growth overall, I would have to say, because they didn't have a lot going on until really September hit. Um, And and to me, I think it was October when you had a lot of the really good stuff start to come out. So again, I think this is great news. We already learned through Jeff when he was on Defining Duke a couple of weeks ago that yes, Xbox has millions upon millions of dollars sitting there ready to be spent on Game Pass by the middle of next year. So seeing these stats and then seeing, of course, when they gauge out, what's the growth of Game Pass going to look like? Mm-hmm. Prepare for them to go hard in the first half of next year with oh, Game yeah. Pass. I think they are going to almost roadmap it like they did with yeah. Uh, with E3 and be like, here we go from January to June. Here's what you got. Because what we saw mm-hmm. was they continued to add more to Game Pass through that. I thought that was it for the year when they yeah. announced all that. But then they were like, here's I, the Somnium Files, here's Scarlet Nexus, so on and so forth. They kept adding yes. to it. So knowing that that's not it, that's not the end of it, that the service has a room to grow, I think they're they're going to roadmap it in like January and let people know I, what's coming. I already think they're in that bag now because if you look at it too, it's like Age of Empires, Forza, Halo. Now we just got to see what January bring. Mm-hmm. We know what is um what, what, Starfield's end of the year, right? What's in the end of the year? So, uh, when Starfield? Starfield? Starfield's end my, of the year, yeah. No, my, my blanket. Okay, yeah, good. But it, it definitely see. I'm with you in the sense that we're gonna start to see that that roadmap chart, and this is where it's gonna be key that those triple A's are mm-hmm. sprinkled in, and then they're gonna truly see what they can do, especially starting this holiday, yeah, because. Let, let's be real, you know, again, I can joke and clown, you know, Big Mac, Large Fry, Shake, but we do know when Forza hit and Halo hit, it hit different. It hits big, mm-hmm. right? Regardless to how you feel. So they know they're going to get that influx then. But I, I, I love what you said. This is good that it happened because at the end of the day, you're growing, not necessarily with the big titles, right? You're growing, right? Which is positive. But if you want that peak growth, you want where you really want this service to be, you have to feed the service. And my last point I'll say is this is where it goes hand in hand with acquisition. You got to have the 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 first party stuff, and then you gotta have the third party stuff. And it's gonna, we're gonna get into I know there's more questions going, we're gonna talk about this, but it's that that balance, right? To keep people go, oh, yo, bro, I, next yep. month, that's right. You know, that kind of a deal. So people know they have to stay in it. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To keep everything going. Absolutely. But I'm with you. And tying into this conversation is a question from a lot of A's. Mm-hmm. Hey, Dukes, I was wondering what you thought about Jez Corden saying that acquisitions by Microsoft could lead to diminishing returns. He said that people might have limited time and flooding too many games at once onto Game Pass might lead to games cannibalizing one another. He also pointed out how third parties might not want to release games on Xbox anymore because they might feel that they cannot compete with Microsoft's own first party. At first, I disagreed, but more and more, I feel like he is correct. There does come a point where you have too many games, and that might happen to Xbox if they were to get another publisher. I wonder what you guys think. Hmm. Good question. Good question. Shout out to the days. Um, I disagree. I'm going to tell you why. The reason why I disagree as far as diminishing returns is that at the end of the day, one, you, you have to feed this service. Like, you just have to. That That is first. I don't think the, the only issue they're going to have is when, let's say, 
are we going to say like 2020, late 2022, 2023 is when things jump off, right? Like we talk in Starfield, Hellblade, Avowed. Like you're going to get into an Xbox game studio first party cadence where things are going to be bam, 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 yeah. right? That's when the cooking starts, right? Now you can, between 2021, 2022, you can fill the gaps. But also the reason why I said I'm not too crazy, because again, I think a key thing Grubb said when we had him on, I really love that interview, is that third party dealing now, it's harder for Microsoft. It's going to be harder because at the end of the day, Sony's going to be throwing a bag at them. It's not going to be easy. And then the other thing we're seeing is that, let's be real, look at the Scarlet Nexus situation, mm-hmm. right? We all felt that should have been kind of day and date. Yeah, absolutely. Right? You know absolutely. what I'm saying? So to me, the challenge they have, that's why I'm not worried about over things getting flooded, is that people like Crystal Dynamics Square, like, well, you know what? We got y'all mm-hmm. on the back end. Yeah. Let's let us let us get these pre-orders. Let's get all this physical up front. Let's get all this. And if it flop, we hey Microsoft, remember? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's a safety net. And and that's the struggle. And and I don't know if Microsoft is willing to owe. They got money, but rich people to make money, you got to You got to use it. You got to use it smartly. Right. You just can't just throw everybody at everything just because just because you got to You got to still be practical. And I think Microsoft for some are going to be like, nah, fam, like I'm not overpaying you on this one. Right. You know, and it's certain situations they will. But I think not every. So back to the overall question with flooding in the games. It's a delicate balance. You have to look at your first party. You have to see what you have lined up for the year. And to me, you got to fill in the gaps. Okay, this is a weak month. January looking a little spooky here. What do we got going on? We'll throw a bag at whatever's the biggest game in January or February. That'll satiate and give us a window for this first party. That's how I think they got to play it. But this is a great question. This is a great, I love it. I want to get your mindset here because I, I never thought about it this way. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to disrespect Jess because, you know, we, we call him Dad X. Like, yeah. he, he makes great points. Dad but what, what do you think about what Jess said? Uh, I, I agree and disagree. Uh, I don't mean to okay. take too neutral of a stance here, but I get where he's coming from. The I mostly disagree because I'm of the mindset that when you start getting those first parties rolling, provided the numbers show it, which we expected to that game pass will grow a lot quicker and when game pass grows a lot quicker you've got a bigger pool of players to dip into where yeah. i think it's less cannibalization because people are signing up for all different reasons and your library yes. is providing that for people um it's why i think you're seeing xbox double dip into a lot of genres you're seeing them go hard with like fantasy rpgs right we've learned that fable uh, I'm, I'm sorry but we have fable but i'm saying we've learned that um Compulsion Games next game is going to be Dark Fantasy on top of Avowed Fantasy on top of Elder Scrolls 6 Fantasy Fable Fantasy. You see what I'm saying? Like they provide a consistent thing there. And that's not even including indies that are going to be ready. So yes, I think that, that um, people are signing up for different reasons and they're not going to play every single game that comes to Game Pass. So yes, there is the fear of cannibalizing one another. And that's why each deal with Game Pass is different with pay structure and yeah. timing of release like there may be games that work well for game pass that they feel you know what we're releasing too closely to starfield we don't want to fight against that on game pass and already people are going to pre-order our game less because we're on game pass so we're not going to do this that's absolutely a realistic scenario that xbox will always have to battle but i don't know if there will actually be a, a constant battle because i think right. with the library getting bigger and the subscriber base getting bigger that that percentage of people who can see your game will only go up in my yeah. eyes i agree you made a fantastic point and, and two things you said that i really resonate is one the indie scene right because at the end of the day i don't think they necessarily go head to head i think the indies benefit because at the end of the day let's just say big title starfield comes out okay great right mm-hmm. you got that but if there's a little title also in there right let's say a death's door type or whatever whatever when you're finished with whatever and you're in there or you see that smaller game next to this star field mm-hmm. you're like yo what is that right that kind of, so i think they benefit the only thing and another point you made i agree with is diversity of game title 
because let's be honest, not everybody likes a big, you know, fantasy RBG. Not everybody likes JR, you know, what, what you call it. Mm-hmm. So let's just say like in MLB the show month, right? There's going to be a hardcore contingent like, yo, do bro, sports, bro, baseball, play ball, bro. Yeah, yep. You know what I'm saying? Play ball, bro, ain't necessarily RPG, bro. No, <laughs> certainly not. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. again, if you you have you could still have two or three blockbusters in that sense, but they're different type of games, which is going to get a different crowd. So I'm with you. I think the diversity in the AAA is going to be key. They got to be cognizant. Yeah. I agree. But yeah, I, I'm with you. I think there's a fantastic. Like, I don't point. think, for example, Bungie would be worried about putting Destiny Two stuff on Game Pass because Sea of Thieves and then Contraband will be there, right? These are two exactly. other service games, but they're doing different things. Um, right. And honestly, they may benefit from it. They may look at it from the standpoint of, well, we can get the Sea of Thieves guy to join right. on to Destiny 2. That's the other thing is uh, it's kind of like what we talked about on Defining Duke Ultimate of Xbox showing Halo at Jeff Keighley's show rather than their own platform. Because it's like, let's get the Nintendo guy. Let's get the PlayStation guy because yep. it's free to play. It's easy to find. It's easy to download. It's not secluded to one platform in one area where that particular consumer may not be looking. So I think that there's a, a lot more to gain here from yeah. Game Pass personally, but I'm also a big believer in it there. So there, there's yeah. that perspective too. Oh, for sure. For sure. Anyway, that's number two. We got much more to go through. Let's get it. Number three, adding insult <laughs> to injury. Fable fans, y'all had a tough week. Yeah. Over the last weekend, Xbox Game Studios publishing Twitter account was responsible for promoting third party exclusive titles under the Xbox banner, and they wrote the following in a now-deleted post. Quote, We are excited to kick off something special tomorrow. Just give us one more day to prepare the chickens. We'd call it our Fable anniversary, but that name was already taken. End quote. Reasonable speculation spread across the industry that likely something involving the old Fable games was on the way. After quickly deleting the tweets, the Xbox Game Studios publishing Twitter account published a new update for their plans. Quote, Sorry for any confusion. We have we don't have any big game news tomorrow or any info about Playground's upcoming Fable game, end quote. Andrew Singo writes in, Hello, Dukes. How on God's green earth has Xbox Game Studios publishing Twitter account missed the mark so badly? As I'm sure you both know, they tweeted a tease about news to come and then followed it up with a tweet specifically naming Fable only to come back and say they have no news or information on Fable. What in the world? How can they make such an egregious error? Anyway, I love both of you. Keep making the best ad Xbox podcast on the planet. Andrew, thank you, Andrew. Thank you. God, thank you. What the fuck happened here? Sov uses an expression I love. I, I hope I don't butcher it. It's like, the, it's the opposite one. Where it's like when you snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, oh, man. We, bro, y'all got to listen to this ultimate that we did. Mm-hmm. I like that the, the ultimate we did about this was one of those those moments and it's just the self-inflicted step on the rake bang yourself in the head moment and it's just we can't excuse it there's just no reason it, it there's no way that the xbox game publishing twitter account and the xbox twitter account get together make this type of tweet Use the words, we'd call it Fable Anniversary. We are excited to kick something special off tomorrow. You use the verbiage. You set the expectation. And then, because that thing went live when we were doing ILP, it sat for about seven hours. Mm -hmm. Seven. Mm -hmm. And then we get the follow-up tweet. Sorry for the confusion, you know, whatever. And it's just like, how? what's going on in the building? How nobody don't know. I don't know, bro. Like, what, where are you at with this? Well, what's really, really interesting is Fable Anniversary is a game that they've done. It's a re-release of the first Fable game. And so them going, oh, well, we call it Fable Anniversary, but that name's already taken. And then you look at Fable Lost Chapters was coming out the following day. Like, it was the anniversary for that when that game came out in 2005. You see that Fable 2 released October 21st of 2008. You're thinking, oh, shit, like, this is actually a fable week. I didn't even know it. And I'm thinking, oh, wow. That, that, I remember, Cog, I was at the, uh, I was at H Mart. I had Let's a little go. pep in my step, man. Let's I was go. grabbing all Let's my go. seafood. I was, I was feeling good, bro. I was so excited because I was thinking to myself, yeah, it's going to be so long until we see something with fable. I never thought 
it'd be great if they really fine tuned these games. Because if you go back and play Fable, unmistakable charm, oh, yeah. but they don't control that well. And if they That's could true. just tune that up a little bit. That'd be so nice to see on top of whatever else they want to do, like maybe fixing yeah. Fable 3 loading screens. That'd be also yeah. a substantial improvement. I'd love to see that stuff. And what a lot of people thought, these things would be possible now. I don't know what happened here. I, I yeah. checked my sources. They were like hand tossing on. <laughs> we don't know either, Matt. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sorry. I don't have any additional information on this one. Mm-hmm. My speculation, which is spec, is that the anniversary event that we talked about number one of our news yeah. mm-hmm. is where we may find out what this is oh good point i didn't think about that i didn't think about it and then I, I, to jump in real quick i think look when you make a tweet like this and we said it on ultimate and i said it there this news is happening you don't make you don't just randomly throw this out into the ether unless you're sitting on something. So to me, this denotes that someone jumped the gun. Someone went yeah. too early and they had to pull that person back. But the problem what makes it so bad, it was just it was the Xbox publishing account and the Xbox account. So there were two mistakes mm-hmm. here, right? That's what makes it bad. And again, but we it just also said, shows brand wide knowledge that something was happening. Yes, it was happening. It was happening. It was clearly. So now, it, to me, this looked like, yo, you went too early. We doing it on November 15th, mm-hmm. remember? Mm-hmm. <laughs> or oh, we're doing it on such and such date, remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, let me pull it back. You know, we've seen these instances. And, and again, we they, from a communication standpoint, they have to improve. They're other... The other, the big three, the other two of the big three, These, this doesn't happen to them. Do you see the PlayStation account? Hey, guys! <laughs> It's going to be big tomorrow, bro. Sly Cooper, y'all remember that Yo, one? It was Sly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, you know what, guys? Our bad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for nothing happened, torture. guys. Yeah, like, what? Nite- you think Nintendo's doing it? You think Nintendo putting out that tweet? Yeah. Yo, mm. new Mario. Yo, Mario coming. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Zelda's coming. Something something for the nostalgia, guys. Yep. Oh, by the way, our bad. Yeah. Yo. Nothing, nothing. Awful. Sorry if you Let's delete the tweet. Yeah. <laughs> and especially <laughs> Fable, man. With Fable, it sucks because it's been dormant for so long. Yeah, and and you look at the history, it. you know, you, you look at what happened with the multiplayer component that they did in like 2014. Mm-hmm. You, you look at Bro. what happened in the line ahead, the constant yeah. rumors that Xbox knew about 100% when it came to a leaked Fable game yes. coming from Playground. Yes finally announced in 2020 and it's like oh my Mm -hmm. gosh it's been such a long road that they just they really messed with the wrong fan base when you think oh for sure let me tell you something like i I got one request um i'll have to plug if we ever do an ultimate whenever fable does come out Mm -hmm. i gotta have at it oh of course yeah that was our role yeah he is such a connoisseur he he is so passionate about that franchise this tore him up he was just like it was like you know what is the gta here we go again yeah 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 Yeah, it's funny it reminds me of in 2014 uh there was this teaser website called survivor 2299 shout out to the og maddie listeners who know what i'm talking about so this was a teaser website that was made and there were so many blatant hints about fallout 4 it was connecting it to the commonwealth boston which fallout 4 ended up being set in Mm-hmm. Um, there were phone numbers set up. It went on for a month. It was being covered by major media. Mm-hmm. Everyone was convinced this was like a Bethesda Game Studios ARG. And I just remember like a month and a half, this thing is going, I'm not being hyperbolic, crazy. What? Updates every day. People what? are going wild because they think Fallout 4 is coming. Mm-hmm. Bethesda just comes out one day. Do not assume anything that we that does not have our name on it is coming from us. And, I'm just, and, and everyone's like, wait, so you just let that go for that long? That has scarred me. So since then, I'm like, maybe Xbox just was clueless here. But, yeah, but still, Maddie, it, it's unacceptable, bro. It's it is. Just, I agree. It, it is. And, and like I said, I want to shout out the new hire they have. I got to plug ILP a little bit. Shout out to Seth Chazelle. You know, they brought him in. This guy is revered of journalists and in the industry. He was one of the ones that had, um, remember when Phil, everyone was shelf watching Phil? Mm. And he, Seth was the one that had the interview with Phil 
when Phil had the Series S in the back and no one knew that the oh, Series S existed. That. Oh. Yeah, that was that. That was like shelf gate. You were looking every time Phil comes mm-hmm. on, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But look, you know, he's now like the executive head of communications. And I, I listen, you, you know, Cog, I got to keep it real. You know, I did tell him during the interview, I said, look, we love that they hired you because you are good. You're a new hire. But we had to be honest, like in the past, they haven't had the greatest of communication. There's been some, you know, that needs to pick. So what I'm hoping for for the future is that all these type of things are aggregated and say, look, this is what the 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 impression, the optics are. And they have to improve. You cannot do this to a base. And that's why I completely agree, you know, with um, what's our boy? Was it um Andrew, yeah, Andrew saying, like, I completely agree. You, 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 this is egregious that on a prof- To me, it's just either too many chefs in the kitchen, mm. and and they just they have to streamline a process that cannot happen. Yeah. You can't make these types. I of agree. Stuff. I agree entirely. And the, the last thing I want to touch on is their wording because they said <sighs> we don't have any big game news tomorrow. I didn't say yes. at all. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. So yes. uh, just to add on to your point that there is something there that Absolutely. they're sitting on now. My yes. guess is they they realized with the Halo gameplay, this and probably some other announcements that they could make an event and they've strung together this anniversary event last yeah. minute. So yeah, let's just hope it's not like Twitch at ID and Xbox and, uh, <laughs> and they just really bomb it. Let's just hope that they've planned out something that's pretty simple, quick and to the point. No doubt, no doubt. Number four, this one, Cog. Mm-hmm. Put those hands up. Let's go. Let's go. I'll put that one finger up. Here we go. In 2018, Xbox acquired Compulsion Games, and since then, it has been mostly silent. An interview with Xbox Squad featuring community developer Nadia Hodges recently popped up and was translated from a French, or sorry, translated from French by an outlet, Video Game Chronicles, which provided an update on the quiet studio responsible for We Happy Few. She states that the production of the game they are working on exclusively for Xbox started only a few months after We Happy Few's full release in 2018 and is now in full development. Since the pandemic, the team is at, or I'm sorry, the team at Compulsion Games has managed to double its team size to about 80 people. Nadia also confirms part of a rumor circling around the industry, which is that this is a third person narrative driven title. Just one, baby. Let's go. Just one. Because you already know there's going to be a new IP, for sure. Mm -hmm. She didn't say that, but I feel pretty confident on that. Yeah. We Happy Few was tested through the Xbox Game Preview program. Since the team wanted to fine-tune the survival and roguelike mechanics, due to the structure of this new game, it will not be following the same path. Nadia states, quote, So we said, okay, we're going to make a real game with an end and a story. The next game is a story. We know where we're going, end quote. To wrap up the interview, she refused to spill details on the engine being used for this game, as well as the timing for a reveal. Dude, compulsion <sighs> Games. Together. They're that they're that undrafted pick that's, yes. that's made the team through the tryouts. Yes. And they can show up. They save the game late in the fourth quarter. A Woo! snub star QB goes down. And here we go. I think, dude, I feel really good about compulsion. Oh, I'm loving it. But I'm again, it. I'm sorry, I'm going to cut you off. Just no, 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 one, no, thing, no, no. one thing that really stood out to me here is this is another studio that's first party from Xbox that has only about 80 employees. When you look at yeah. initiative, compulsion, yeah. obviously compulsion will go up when they get closer to the end. But mm-hmm. um, Xbox is keeping these studios smaller, which may explain why they have so many that they can manage. They're not as big. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. This is like, first, I was sitting on this for a while. I, I, I oh, did know this. I did know this. People did. source was sitting on it. I did know this. Oh. I did, but out of respect, out of respect, I said, I want them to break that. Mm. You know, I don't want to take away. So I always, I stood on the hashtag just one movement, even though I knew this was most likely going to be it. Right. Yeah, yeah. And first of all, Nadia is awesome. I love her. Had her on ILP. She even at the time, cause someone was like, Hey, what type of game is it? Can you at least give us the, perspective right mm-hmm. and we were told third person so technically i hope he did, mm-hmm. did you know i got i gotta mm-hmm. pat myself a little bit you know what i'm saying so we did break it but the thing about it is that 
I am so proud of, of that studio, the journey they've come. You use the perfect analogy, like that undrafted <laughs> pick, because let's be real. Their history is re- it, they came from a lot of ups and downs yeah. to still even be in existence. And We Happy Few was very ambitious, but it did change. But it was a lot of good right there that you saw the potential yeah. Of what this could be. Dude, I love the intro to We Happy Few. The, oh, the beginning, yeah. that first hour. Joy? Is so fucking good. And knowing yeah. that they can just do more of that is, <sighs> I have so much confidence in them. Bro, I'm going to get it. Hashtag just one. Mm-hmm. It, look, this, this, this makes me smile. I, I'm so happy. And remember this Phil in an earlier interview said, people are sleeping on compulsion <laughs> games. He said it. Yeah. He was like, he is very excited. So behind the scenes, this is another one of those other reasons why. Remember, before the acquisition, these studios usually have you know tend to show, hey, this is our another project that we're working on, right? And that gets Xbox brass excited yeah. for bringing them in. And this is what man, I am so hyped. Yeah. I'm hearing dark fantasy, mm-hmm. narrative driven. You know what I'm saying? I'm hearing things, you know what I'm saying? But I can't wait for them to reveal more. Look, compulsion, very happy, very excited. You you have more willpower than me. I, I get offered to see certain things behind the scenes, and oftentimes I'm like, can I talk about it? And they go, no. And I say, don't show me. Don't show yeah. me. I, <laughs> you I, I want to tell the audience because I get, yeah. or, like, if it pops up, excited. they're like, hey, did you see Game X? I'm like, I, well, uh, you know, yeah. I'll pretend I didn't know. <laughs> but you, you have way more willpower than me. Uh, uh, but yeah, man, I, I like that Phil said that because you know, it doesn't remind me of, we talked about this a little bit, how uh, Aaron Greenberg was like, I smiled playing through the whole Halo campaign. I'm like, of course you did, bro. Of course you of did. Course you did. <laughs> Shout out to the Greenie. Yeah, of who, course you did. Who you man? But, you know. but when Phil's not really asked about this company, it's not really on anyone's map right now. I think they're yep. one of the least talked about ones. It shows that what he sees, he genuinely likes to me, yeah. which makes me Co- happy. Compu- you said it, but compulsion is the undrafted rookie, raw, so much potential. Mm-hmm. And to me, I also, because they're, they, they, they're so like, a lot of people don't know enough about them, mm-hmm. right? They just don't know. And, and to see what they could do is going to be crazy. And the other thing that, the other one that, not that I put them in an undrafted, because people know who in exile, but I put in exile in that, yo, people sleep in category. Oh, in exile sleep might be in. even more. Because yeah. at least NXL has some really proven and titles. But yes. We Happy Few was like, okay. It was okay. Right. But NXL is actually proven talent that people are just like on. And it's, it's, it's Bro, bothersome. Peep, I, 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 it just bog- boggles me when people don't even act like they some major thing. And I'm like, all right, y'all going to see it. Y'all mm-hmm. going to see about Compulsion. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel pretty good about Compulsion. I, I'd be yeah, surprised if they completely dropped the ball on this. Not that. This new game will be very yeah. good, but uh, I, I feel like, again, I, I urge people to see the scripted parts of We Happy Few when they're not doing the survival BS, the roguelike yeah, yeah, mechanics. Yeah. When they get rid of those and you're seeing the more focused components of the game, every time you get into that, it's a, it feels like a completely different story. It's so much better, so much more controlled. Yes. And knowing that they'll get to do a full game like that, I'm telling you, it's very good news. Yeah, I'm hype, man. Very, pulling for them. Yeah, they're very hype. Absolutely. Number five, we'll take a little bit of a break from the Xbox stuff. One of 2022's most anticipated games has slipped into the month of February, joining a legion of other highly anticipated games set for release. That game is Elden Ring from From Software, which has seen its release date slide from January 22nd, 2022 to February 25th, 2022. Alongside this information came the announcement of a closed network test beginning this November, which fans can sign up for now. And it will only be on the family of Xbox and PlayStation consoles. So no PC for that cog. You getting in Ooh. on that Elden Ring at all? <sighs> you oh, know I'm not sad. a Souls guy. Yeah, I know. It looks cool. I will jump in this test, though. Mm. I will jump in it. I, I want to I wanna see what the vibes is. Just because, look, there's certain things I feel like are gaming moments. And Elden Ring, Ring is a moment. Yeah, right? yeah. It, it is this. It, I, I have to at least see right before I get into my old man yelling at the <laughs> crowd. These games are too hard. They don't think. Right? I'm, trust, trust me. I, I'm not. I shouldn't say that. I'm not on that. These games are too hard. Shouldn't exist. No. 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 Don't cater to me. These games need to exist. Mm. This is a huge market. Again, I want to shout out my boy Ebontis. I want to shout out Addict. I want to shout out you. Like 
they're I love to watch them play these games yeah, so and good. the challenge and they're almost broken and then the victory when they figure out these bosses and these patterns mm-hmm. and you see the joy and and also these games stream well yeah people tune in they want to especially if they beat it they want to see the pain you go through the pain to get their enjoyment sadistically <laughs> off of it sure, that's so, the thing that's the thing yeah yeah, it's a big thing. So yeah, I, I'll, I'll definitely check it out. I'll de- I mean, I'm not going to commit after that, right? But I will definitely be a part of that. But where are you? What? How? What's your mind? And then also, what did you think about the the the, the leak? Oh yeah, I forgot the gameplay Ooh. leak. Yeah, it looks so good. I, I I really, it reminds me of how I felt before Bloodborne came out, where a lot of from soft strength comes from like how its world looks you know that's something that yes. ropes me in i've played good games from them that just didn't capture mm-hmm. me as much uh not even because the game was bad but just the the world space has to be interesting because they have this mystical creepy creature design that uh the environment feeds off of and so it looks like they're kind of hitting that again here I'm excited to try it out in the network test if I get in. But this slipping a month is totally fine with me. I don't care if it's coming out in a mess of games. I will play this one first. I'm very excited for Elden Ring. I love that mm-hmm. there. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't crazy about Sekiro. It just uh, to me, it didn't Ooh. vibe well. I beat for those who want to know. I beat Genichiro and I said, that's enough. Okay. I've, I've seen okay. enough of this game to know. I just don't like it as much. Oh, uh, felt, uh, felt a little too rhythmic for me okay uh okay. the combat disengaged me funny enough which i it's funny because i think a lot of people were engaged by that feeling of true sword battles uh right. which i respect i don't i don't think it's not doing the right thing i just mm. didn't click with it well and it reminded me too much okay. of persona 4 dancing if i'm telling you the truth it, it, <laughs> it, it really did it really did it just it felt like that same mentality that same routine sure i was like this is supposed to be that smoke with oh i've been i've got a record like four different times of saying this well, so, you, you survived. yeah okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm here okay. i'm here I've, I've lived to tell the tale <laughs> that uh that Sekiro and, and Persona 4 are on the same level. But anyway, my point being is Elden Ring is uh remind me a little bit of, of how I felt with Bloodborne. And uh Bloodborne, okay. Bloodborne's a goat. So yeah, yeah, yeah. really excited to see them do open world because I think that's a natural evolution where they're not jumping into just a saturated space because it sells well, but they're saying, like, hey, our games have always been interconnected, lots of big open areas. Let's open up the whole world and take on this new challenge, more verticality. It's really going to change how they design encounters. So I think it's going to be much more interesting just off the off the rip. So mm-hmm. really, really looking forward to this. I don't care if it's coming out with a bunch of games, though. It's I'm very, very excited. This is what this you're one. doing. Yeah. This is this is priority. Even even I think was it uh, Forbidden West? Isn't it around? Yeah, February? yeah it's going to share a date with Forbidden West, and uh, we'll have to we'll have to balance that out. But mm-hmm. uh, I'll make it work. Oh, I'll make it work. Enough, yeah. Because uh, yeah. Forbidden West is all priority incredible. But um, yes. Elden Ring, top of the list for me. No doubt. And now no it gives doubt. Pokemon Legends a little bit of breathing room for me, which is one I'm mm-hmm. very, very excited for. So yeah, I'm in trouble. Witch Queen, it's over for me. Oh, it's yeah. It's, sharing it for you on that day, too. Over right? for yeah. me. But I am going to try. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Best of luck to you. Yes. It's over for me. <laughs> <laughs> Number six. After crushing the very notion of a Ubisoft Splinter Cell game into the dust on last week's Defining Duke, we may have accidentally willed it into existence (laughs) by giving it too much attention. Word comes by way of Video Games Chronicle, who says that the title has been put into production as a means of winning back fans frustrated by recent efforts to revive the series. The two people with knowledge of the situation suggest that the new Splinter Cell is being led by a studio outside of its typical Montreal base. It is currently in an early production phase, but there's a small chance that it could be announced this year. Jeff Casteris writes in, what's up, Dukes? So, as you guys have heard, it seems like Splinter Cell is in development. If true, or if this is true, as a huge Splinter Cell fan, I'm concerned that Ubisoft might have figured out how to throw their blueprint on the Splinter Cell. Will we see an open world gear score, climb this tower to reveal the mark, and (laughs) map these enemies in Splinter Cell? Or do they have the, this is in capital letters, alls, to ignore their copy and paste tactics and stay true to the franchise. The only game, in my opinion, Splinter Cell should somewhat copy is MGS5. Nothing else. What do you all think? Keep it up. Mm, I got so time much to in for in. this one. Yeah, I, I, I want you to yeah, start set this off. I got so much to okay. say here. Yeah, I, I'm curious about this because we, like you, like like you know, he said, Jeff said, like we kind of willed it into existence again with how animate we were. 
right? And sadly, about how we felt. But I want to know where you are now that this news is breaking. I'm very curious. Yeah, um, mine will be quick. I'm I'm not excited. I just can't be. I, I, I don't trust them to handle this in a way that's separate from their other stuff because they haven't really showcased that to me. Uh, there's a template behind all their games. And, and I think there's a little bit more smoke and mirrors in Assassin's Creed with the RPG stuff. It does feel yeah. different in that regard. But otherwise, the layout, the structure, it's one for one the same across a new IP like Immortals Phoenix Rising to right. old stuff like Far Cry. So they've given me no reason to trust them. The only times things have been different is when they did something like Mario and Rabbits, which Nintendo yeah. was involved in. So I think Correct. maybe they had a, a reason to do that or rather that Nintendo was like, yo, not this one. Not this one. <laughs> so for me, I, I can't help but but not feel uh, okay with this one. I, I don't think that they're ready. Um, the only thing I will offer in the defense of this game yes, is, we talked about this too, that maybe by the time it comes around, this is where the new turnover of leadership within Ubisoft and the new mindset there for the games they're making it's possible that Ubisoft is making games differently when this one comes around. Because remember, they're saying now it's just been green light, like it's just in development. So it's right. going to be many years from now. Yeah. yeah so yeah, when it yeah. does roll around and Ubisoft, hopefully their philosophy changes internally, I do think there's the possibility that this mm -hmm. game turns out a little bit differently. But from what I've seen currently, I'm not feeling very convinced that they're going to be the ones handling it. Yeah, well said. Well said. Hit a lot of the points I was thinking too. Okay, I mean, <laughs> it's it's. I used a meme in Avengers. Is it's with Hawkeye and they. they I think uh, what's what's her name? Black Widow finds him during the whole uh, Thanos thing. And yeah, don't give me hope. He's gone. Yeah, don't give me hope. Like that, yeah. that's what I was. I was like, don't give me, don't do this to me, yeah, right? Yeah, because we've been burned so many times, and it's like, look. Am I excited to, you know, internally that it, at least it's not dead? Yes. Right. But like you said, as they are currently constructed, as they, you know, the way they do game design, you know, the copy paste, the very samey, even down to the UI mm -hmm. icons on the map, you know, like yeah. it's very company assembly line ish. Right. Yeah. So that definitely, you know, gives me cause of concern. The hope is what you said, which is like, OK, they're announcing it now. As we know, they have huge internal problems from a personnel standpoint, from community standpoint, harassment it, the, in the building hasn't been nice. Mm -hmm. Right. So. That in conjunction with changing the culture and the fact that let's be real, I think I, I keep forgetting the gentleman's name. I got to find it. Um, I think uh, Jez said it or Rand said it. There is an original member of the Splinter Cell team that has come back to Ubisoft. Right. Right. My hope is that he has a prominent role in this, this project. Sure. The, the issue comes down to just like, you know, Jeff saying it's like, Splinter Cell is the essence of stealth. He that is that is true stealth, right? Like I'm I'm just concerned that they don't change the formula into something else and it doesn't fit with the monetization model, right? So I I again I want to be careful how they go and they implement. Sam Fish is a very sacred property. Like, you know, now look, when it comes out I'm going to get it. Of course, I'm going to get it. It's, I, I'm too connected to it. Mm. But at the end of the day, it, it's Jeff eyebrow raised, cause of concern. See what it is. The only hope is down the road. Maybe the culture has changed. Maybe things, you know, really change for the better. And that's it. But I was, I'll be honest. I was surprised to see this one. Yeah. I was like, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. You had to assume something was rolling around with how much they were tossing him into other games, but for some reason oh. they never wanted to commit to it. And, I believe the report had said because there was a lot of pressure to work yes. on that brand. So they were going, ah, we don't know if we want to tackle this. And they kept shying away from it. Now they seem yeah. the time is, is, is now. And maybe that's mm -hmm. why they have that new or a rather former developer returning is I imagine they have the idea that he's that, in the castle. I'm, yeah. I, I want to quote what is uh, the CEO is Eve's Guillermo. Mm -hmm. 
He said, yeah, when you create a game, you have to make sure you come with something that will be different <laughs> from what you did before. <laughs> okay, sorry, go on. The, la- the last time we did a Splinter Cell, we had a lot of pressure from the fans saying, don't change it, don't do this, don't do that. So some of the teams are more anxious to work on the brand. He said, now there are some things and some people that are now looking at the brand, taking care of the brand, Guillermo added. So at one point, you will see something, but I can't say more than that. And... um. Yeah, that was a, an old, uh, you know, interview. But I mean, you know, shout out to Tom Anderson, you know, for for putting it out mm-hmm. there. You know, he is respected, you know. So I, I'm I'm Your gonna work. run with it for now. You know, I'm gonna run with it for now and think that it is happening. And like I said, hopefully it ain't too new thing, too many new things added mm-hmm. that is not against, you know, that go against the core of what the essence of the franchise actually is: stealth and, and the stuff that we love. You know, agreed. For now, we move on to number seven, back to some Xbox news. In a conversation with Wall Street Journal, Phil Spencer went on a familiar spiel in regards to studio acquisition, stating how Xbox is not done and they want to take a more long-term approach, as we've heard before. Perhaps more notably is their stance on VR. Quote, we're big believers in that software platform and the devices that will enable that. Absolutely. But we're focused a lot more on the software side of that right now. When I think about immersive worlds, I think about the connection of a player and community. That's something that's very high on our investment list. I think the devices that are out there now, we stay connected with a lot of the players out there. People are building hardware. A lot of that happens on Windows. And we experiment and talk a lot with partners that are there. I think that the hardware innovation that's happening is great. And it's an important enabler. Right now, I'm deciding to stay more on the software side of that enablement. I believe it will scale better in the long run. And, you know, I applaud what Sony's doing. I applaud what Oculus is doing, what Valve has done. I mean, there's a lot of good players out there that have done some amazing VR VR work. But, yeah, we're going to stay as a company right now in the consumer uh, space focused on software. And I think that's a good bet, end quote. Sean Mason Mm -hmm. writes in, greetings, Dukes. After Phil Spencer's recent comments that Xbox will continue to stay away from developing their own dedicated VR headset, I can't help but think that Xbox is missing the boat with VR. PlayStation, Oculus, and Valve have proven that there is a dedicated audience. With Game Pass giving millions of users access to games, I feel the adoption of VR would skyrocket. Perhaps, or despite Phil Spencer's statements, what do you think is the possibility that some form of VR, whether it be their own headset or they allow access to Valve's or Oculus, will appear on an Xbox console in the future? Best, Sean M. How are we feeling about this, Cog, is a new VR f- fan i mean what, what do you what do you think that they're just saying nah we're gonna stay with the software side of things so funny this topic came right on top man another fantastic topic this hit home this hit home um as y'all know cargo is a big vr hater right for many for many years right got that oculus got that quest too i love it i see the potential i see the future i'm like this is something that you know eventually gamers should experience and Mm -hmm. will chart in a positive direction with all that being said i'm with phil on this Mm. and i'm gonna tell you why okay let's get into it tell you why not that i don't want microsoft to ever do it in the future the reason why i'm with it is that when you look at the other competitors you look at playstation here's the difference they have a track history track record the history of great games locally on the platform that are not vr they have this prestige right you know they to me can afford to experiment and say hey we got this vr product because we're doing so well here Mm -hmm. we got this vr product that we want you to go check it out and we're going to put some studios there and some games there and that's cool i look at oculus dedicated vr device right. all the resources are there they are and i think they got ready at dawn over there now they, yeah, they're yeah. hiring things. resident evil 4 is about to come out on oculus i'm about to pick that bad boy up they, they're really and they're untethered i love what oculus is doing right same thing valve we already know half-life alex they got they thing you know to me those guys are afforded we gotta be honest with xbox we are coming off the Xbox One era. Yeah. Right? They have not notoriously had a good history with their own first party. My thing is, especially coming off of the Connect generation with the peripherals, I don't want resources split 
from Xbox Game Studios doing other things. I don't want Bethesda to be working on Skyrim VR or whatever, or Fallout VR. I want them to get their house in order first. (laughs) Now, the, the question if it comes to on the future, of course, I'm not opposed. I'm, I'm, I'll pick it up. Of course. I think in my position, they're better suited to say, hey, we allow these devices, you know, on our platform and some type of integration as opposed to we making our own specific thing with specific software. That's just where I'm at right now. I just think, you know, I'm, I know a lot of people are going to push back. They go, oh, God, are you going to say that because you just like VR? And I do. And if they decide to do it, great. I just want them focusing on great games. Mm-hmm. Make great games first before you want to expand and go out and all. That's just yeah. where I'm at. I know Maddie might push back, but that's no, where I'm at. No, I'm in full agreement. I think okay. it would be short-sighted if they did this because their plan for software isn't even fully realized, right? We're talking xCloud. We're talking Game Pass. It's a platform. Yeah trying to get all over the place i don't think that you need to as you said spend resources on vr right now i think maybe in the future but as he sort of said at the top it's like oh we're kind of connected to vr because we're on windows like we're, we're working mm-hmm. with them on stuff so mm-hmm. i think that they are familiar enough with it i know they had teamed up with oculus at one point i want to say it was 2019 they had made that a more public statement but again i mm-hmm. think that was the more windows side of things this was not like xbox getting involved right 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 right. so i think overall it's a good thing they still have a lot of places to shore up the defense on we talked about hey we need some family friendly games in there we need some of those 3d platformers in there fighting fighting games yeah we need to address a lot more things on the software front that's one thing playstation albeit they kind of use a similar template across a lot of their games they have a working portfolio and a a constant turnaround from these studios with a couple of new experiments here and there from from other partnerships so for them um they're comfortable enough where they can go try vr which has worked out well for them they're doing extremely well in vr and hopefully they try out handheld game and and bring back that vita but you know that's the thing if xbox is going to spend money on hardware go make the x boy go make that uh that little handheld device that's got game pass on it that's that's what i'm I'm looking for Mm -hmm. Anyway, Xbox, not interested in VR. Not particularly surprising when you look at the, the amount of work yeah. they're doing across the board yeah. that they're not going to focus on this for now. Yeah, let's get these games out first. Let's, let's get 2023, 2044. Let's get a mm-hmm. good cadence of quality games mm-hmm. first. Yeah, because imagine that some of those games suck, right? Then, yeah. then what? Then what? Yeah, now we're going to yeah. VR. No, that's bad. Yeah. That's bad. I'm good. Number eight. God of War is making its way to PC after many rumors, plus a recent GeForce Now leak suggesting it was on the way. The PC port will arrive on January 14th, 2022 for the price tag of 50 US dollars. This version will enjoy true 4K, make use of NVIDIA's DLSS, and support ultra-wide monitors. Otherwise, it's the same game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, hate to tell certain people I told you so. Oh, <laughs> but... I will tell them. I told you By so. Means. Yeah, shout out to Rand, man. We had him on. This was what is that, like a year ago, and he he broke this on ILP, and he's like, "Look, Hog, I'm telling you, I forgot which the first. It was like when Horizon first got announced, the first one, right? Mm-hmm. And at the time, there were certain members of the PlayStation community that were very, we're not doing that, bro. Sony values their first party. This will never yeah. happen. I, I, <laughs> you see our boy, as King says, we call him Worldwide Jim. He, he not satisfied with just the console base. He's not. He wants hundreds of millions, right? Mm-hmm. This is where it goes, whether it comes day or date or not. It's coming, right? And at the end of the day, look, more gamers get it. There's no need to get into this gating and emotional thing where it's mine and no one else can have it. You know, that's it. That's just where the market's going. So I thought this was quite humorous. Twitter is lit. King is about to have a ball, right? I'm letting y'all know right now. Y'all don't want to see. Oh, bro. Y'all don't want to see that man on Sunday. I'm telling y'all the stuff this man about to do. Because he is, yeah, yeah. Oh, you already know. He like to see. He gonna be in his bag, and I gotta let him go. Normally, I police and I try to keep balance, but I gotta let him because I remember. I re- bro, it was so bad. They were attacking Rand. They were calling him all type of crazy names, all type of stuff. 
I got bets with people because we do this thing called bend the knee like bets. Mm-hmm. Like, so I was like, yo, I'll put it on. I said, that's coming. It'll never come, cock. And if it, you know, I, I, cool. I said, but if it do come, you're going to super chat and I want your knees. I want a public <laughs> apology. Get on your knees <laughs> and, and tell me you was wrong because this is what you're It's a great fandom. long-term investment. That's how you make your, your money right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You get you get it because what it is, they're so emotional. They're getting their feelings. It's just the way the industry is trending. There's nothing wrong. As a PlayStation fan, you enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. It's just another group that, you know, like Layden and, 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 and Jim Ryan have said, like, it's another house that the PlayStation PC guys will, some of them will never come yeah. to to that console ecosystem. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? That's it. My boy E, he's just a PC guy. He's not coming. This is the type of stuff he loves and you still yeah. making money. And guess what? It benefits the devs. The baby people who, who worried about the devs, yeah. it benefits the devs. Yeah. Like, so there you go. There it is. Go support the <laughs> devs. Random. It's over on go PC. Support- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I um I don't have anything else to add. I, I don't think yeah. I I'm I'm happy to see it. You'll definitely see more. It's plenty more yeah. on the way. I remember sure. funny story. I remember when we were on Ham Radio this was last go. year, and it was Let's me go. and Carrick. And I, I always remember mm-hmm. editing this because he had slipped that Uncharted was coming to PC, which Ooh. as we saw in the yep. recent PlayStation showcase, it is. And this he knew this really early, but I remember him sitting there saying like, "Yeah, and there are other games coming to PC too." Because I think this is around the time Horizon was announced. He's like, "Like Uncharted." Yep. And like I remember him just stopping and going, "Hey, can you edit that out?" <laughs> yeah. And like, hey, since you need that edit, yeah. And when I was going through, combing through the footage, and I, I saw him like catch himself leaking, like you saw his eyes pop out of his head. So his eyes like, oh, yeah. Oh. And then he went, "Fuck!" Like that. And he was like, "Hey, can you just edit that out?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah." But uh, okay. yeah, I just this has been circling around for a while that that these games are coming to PC. Uh, one of them has already been made public. Now we have another. I imagine yes. something like Ghost of Tsushima will yeah. will likely be next, or maybe Spider Man. I think that'd be really yeah. cool to see on PC and all the mods that could come to it. So yeah, looking forward to seeing people enjoy God of War for the first time. It's a great game. Yeah. Now available on PC. I enjoy. Shot the ball off. He tweeted it out mm-hmm. as well too. Number nine, Dad of Xbox Jez Corden is added again with a laundry list of new scoops he has acquired about all that is on the table for Xbox Game Studios. Let's lay it out. Ooh. First, due to the size of the team for Avowed, which is around 100 people, he doesn't expect the game to be the size of Skyrim, but at least as deep as the Outer world. However, he said yeah. he could be wrong. This is okay. based off what he's seen. Okay. Next, Obsidian aims to release a new game each year for the next seven years. Mm. It starts next year with Grounded in 2022, getting its full release. Avowed in 2023 and The Outer Worlds 2 in 2024. He did also mention that something like Josh Sawyer's project could launch within one of the same years. So it's likely to be maybe seven games within that seven year span. So you could see a double up at some point. Okay, Obsidian. Compulsion Games' new game is Dark Fantasy, like Insider Clobril had suggested. He mentioned the third person aspect of it too, which has already been previously confirmed as we read in an earlier story. Project Dragon by IO Interactive is officially greenlit and in full development. Hellblade 2 is much, much, much bigger in scope, and you can expect to see that this year. State of Decay 3 has a bigger narrative focus to make you care about your characters beyond them just being tools for gameplay. This is a big focus for Undead Labs. He mentioned Project Shaolin and Project Belfry, but has no info on that. But he does mention that there are many lists of new projects through Xbox Game Studios. So there are plenty on the way beyond that. Last but not least, Finnish studio Mainframe is working on a native cloud game for Xbox. They also received a $8.1 million investment, including some help from Riot Games. So it'll be interesting to see what they are working on. Anthony writes in, Dukes and Lords, on the most recent Xbox Two podcast, Jez dropped a lot, albeit mostly vague, exciting tidbits about the in-development Xbox Game Studios titles. It's very exciting, but my question is this. Does Xbox need more first-party teams still, or are they in a place where they should just focus on what they have? Keep up the great work, and I hope you have a leaving your car's interior lights on by mistake, thus killing your battery for when you need to go somewhere kind of day. Yo, I actually had that happen on a date one time. Had to happen to me, bro. Yeah. That's the worst. Had to happen on a date one time. We we, we left the key in the ignition, ignition oh. and uh, she was like, "All right, it's time to go home." And I turned the key, and I'm like, "Oh, oh shit!" It was like, "We ain't going anywhere. <laughs> go for a ride. I got to get this thing charged." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had to have it. That's real. Yeah. That's real. It's scary, man. But 
what do you uh, what do you think of Xbox's laundry list of of upcoming games here? Lot on the table, and uh, do they have enough or no? Because it seems like internally, based on what Jez said with the list he saw, Jez, by the way, his mantra is, "I don't leak anything until I see the documentation." So I yes. believe he physically laid eyes on it. Yes, but. He's saying he saw a lot of projects there beyond Shaolin, Belfry, like plenty more on the way. Mm. So it seems like Xbox wants to go forward more and more third party, at least. Yeah, yeah, they're cooking. They're cooking. We, we, we see it. Like I said, it's it's looking like that again from late 2022 on. It's cooking. Mm. It's, it's really pop. the thing that blew my mind was the Obsidian. And I I'm already have them as my number one draft pick. I already have mm. them revered to hear, se- bro, like seven years. The ne- every wow, yeah. every year game. Yep. That's crazy. So we had that, you know, the compulsion we knew, you know, say with the dark fantasy. What the hell is Project Shaolin? The ninja mm-hmm. in me needs to know. I know, right? I was what like, is the isn't the code name supposed to hide what the game's about? Yeah, <laughs> like, this is very nose. overt. Yeah. Like, so what's that? I, you know, I okay. You know, we see what's going on. Those are our boys, right? Mm-hmm. Those are, um, uh, you know, we lo- we love our Hitman stuff. Hellblade too big. I think to the question, is it enough, right? On paper right now, it feels like, yo, they look like they stacked. They got, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But I still think, again, we were talking about earlier, right? That monthly and quarterly cadence. So even though we're getting caught up now and it looks beefy and, and crazy, there's still going to be a whole year where gaps got to be filled. So mm-hmm. to me, you still need it. Yeah. You still need to feed it and you still need to fix those deficiencies that we talked about yeah. with those genres, family fighting, just one right and they're gonna get there <laughs> but at the end of the day um yeah i mean this is exciting stuff this is exciting i i, I think i think they're gonna be fine on the first party end but i i do think you still gotta feed the beast you still ha- game pass it's all or nothing it's all in and in order for you to be all in you still need there's still 10 11 months of that year that mm-hmm. need to be filled that's not gonna be first party games so and also let's be real we're still, in, we're still in a kind of pandemic development cycle, right? We're still in things can be delayed. We're seeing delays yep. all the time, yep. right? So there's still no guarantee that everything hits that exact target mark the way it is lined up. That's just not how game development works. So I still think, yo, go out there and go get what you got to get. What do you think? I agree. And yeah. I think you laid it out perfectly. When you look at 2022, you really have Redfall and Starfield right now Mm -hmm. um i don't think anything else is currently on the table from xbox's first party family uh so i think that's an indication that it needs to grow because people are going to look at 2023 and be like okay well we've got hopefully avowed contraband fable and hellblade 2 seems to be the 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 rumor currently these are the 2023 games coming out it's like okay that's that year what happens in 2024 when we need more games right we have one year right now it's going to meet that hopefully meet that quarterly release window. It's like, okay, what happens when we come to 2024? We're hearing the Outer Worlds 2, Skyrim, or I'm sorry, not Skyrim, Elder Scrolls 6 is, is still a number of years off. Um, yeah. Maybe Everwild was one. I mean, you can see it already thins out really quickly. So if they want to yeah. keep that up, they either need to start spending big on yes. acquisitions or they need to really start roping in those big Game Pass deals. So it's oh, going to be yeah. interesting to see how they develop a consistency and mm-hmm. it'll take some time to do that, of oh, course, yeah. uh, a long yeah. while, especially if they they said they want it quarterly every year. And do you realize how many studios they need to have working on things, having the proper turnover where like every three months you're getting a first party release every year? Mm-hmm. Obviously, that won't be perfect. That would just be ideal. But they're going to aim for that. So you could imagine they're at least going for three big first party releases every year at minimum. Mm-hmm. And uh, that takes time to set up. So. Yeah, I don't think the acquisitions are done. And especially if they're yeah. spaced out that way, it kind of goes back to the earlier question of cannibalization where I don't think they have anything to worry about. They should be spaced out yeah. enough over time. We just have one year right now that's looking particularly stacked. And I want to jump in with last thing. Literally, Grub put out a tweet yesterday. And it, to, to me, this mindset is where my arm is, which is like Xbox Game Pass grew 38% during um, 21, 21, despite um, the dearth of Halo-like games. Microsoft's target was 48%. To hit targets beyond, Game Pass is going to need those first-party exclusives as soon as possible. Nothing 
else will cut it. Yeah. You need those big games. Mm-hmm. So you st- you got to feed the bull. Oh, you got to feed. I forgot the piece, to man. throw out Perfect Dark is probably a 23 or 24 game yes. as well. So yes, 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 yes. that would be in the mix point. there. But uh, again, that that list can thin out pretty quickly. Uh, but we'll yeah. be in a period of time there where we're going to be getting stuff consistently and it won't be a worry. We're a couple of signed deals and uh, it's a different Ooh. story, right? We looked at how quickly the Bethesda deal you signed and their 2022 actually has content now, right? Yes. Exclusive content. So we can see how quickly those deals can flip the script oh so yeah. just remember big that time big time anyway shout out to jez for the scoop yeah salute to jez number 10 marcus leto co-creator of the halo universe and creator of disintegration has been hired by ea as a game director he will be assembling a team and building a new studio in seattle to work on first person games and i just wanted to shout this out because uh, ea they're quietly one of the the people poaching talent out there, right? We saw them get Code Masters. Now they're setting up a new first person studio. Just want to shout them out. They're uh, yeah. it's it's been interesting to watch EA because they're you know they're sort of the the yin and yang of the industry yeah. right now. They they got the great stuff like Respawn, but then you see their sports games, but then you see something like this and you go okay, or or what was that game? Uh, it, it takes two. Yes, like, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. But then you see the the monetization, their their corporate <laughs> arm starts to speak. And you're like, what what's happening here? So <laughs> they've been fun to watch, but I uh, just want to shout out this bit of news. Any thoughts on it? I mean, yeah. I mean, I was just like, okay. Uh, it was definitely an eyebrow, like, all right, still act we're still acquiring, mm-hmm. see what's going on. I mean, this guy, you know, I tremendous history you know obviously with Bungie and and, and Master Chief the design yeah. you know kind of thing he he really has a lineage there and then you know his studio prior I believe you know didn't it doesn't exist anymore but now he's in this new project look from what I, every account I don't know too much about him but for every account you know high level talent first person now game looks like they going into I'm curious to see what they cook mm-hmm. up I'm, I'm 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 you know interested they've got some good talent like you said respawn uh what's your, your man y- y- Yosef you know oh, and, yeah. uh, the, the, you know he's outside he uh, he's very brash yes. he's kind of fun I remember he, he grew on me I remember at first I was like I don't know how I feel about him, but, oh, I love him man uh, yeah, yeah well. I've, I've come to love him I like I really do from um it takes two and then what was the the prison one that he had oh co-op. that was um a way out the way out, yes, yes, yes. The way out. So yeah, look, they 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 they're poaching, you know. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what what's going on. Right on. Congrats to Marcus. Looking forward to seeing yeah. what he's doing. Salute. Number eleven. Over the past weekend, DC Fandom took place and showed off new trailers of both Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad. Kill the Justice League. Dylan Lockyer writes in, "Hey, Maddie and Cog, am I the only one more excited?" For Gotham Knights, then Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. I know Rocksteady has infinitely more pedigree than Warner Bros. Montreal, but Arkham Origins is my favorite of the Arkham series for its Christmas setting and young bruiser take on Batman. The Suicide Squad's irreverence doesn't quite click with me, and I'm tired of the evil Superman, evil Justice League trope of the past decade or so, whereas Gotham Knights takes on the Court of Owls feels so fresh and exciting. I'm psyched to play as the Bat Family in something that has the spirit of the Arkham series. I'd love to hear your take since these two games seem like natural competitors vying for the title of DC Gaming Supremacy next year. Ooh. Where are we Where at? at? Where are we at, man? Yeah, you go first. This is, a, this is an interesting one because um, before the fandom... I was definitely saying the um the other one the uh the the the, the, the what you call it, the Gotham Knights. Mm-hmm. I was liking the vibe. I was like, okay, I think they showed them fighting Mister Freeze. They they had some good stuff going on. It's a you know not Batman and stuff. You got your you know your Batgirl. You got your dog. You know, I, I was like, all right, you know, I'm feeling this. I'm mm-hmm. digging it. Um, I didn't know what I felt about the Suicide Squad joint at first. I was like, mm, I don't know yet, right? I gotta be honest. I really like the Suicide Squad mm. trail. I like mm. the vibe. I like the feel. It was it was a nice bit of humor. I, I really felt it. Now, I understand Dylan's point where he's like, okay, he's tired of the you know the whole kill Superman thing, but I thought it was funny. I I, I really liked the whole ragtag you know squad, and um you know I, I I got a little bit more excited. Now the reason why I'm not not saying that I'm not excited about the other one is just that. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not. I had to. I had to defer to King. Like King is my comic book resource. Like he is the guy that really buys every single book, knows every single storyline. Something about Moon Knight, and I was like, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, he knows. Bro, he he. when well, I go to him, he's literally my encyclopedia. If, again, got a plug. If we ever do any type of comic book game oh. thing, that's the guy. So he's. I'm like, yo, what's this quarter owls thing? He's like, bro, this is a very deep storyline. Like, you don't understand. Like, the inner comic geek in me is like smiling ear to ear. So for the hardcore, I get it. It's just that for me, as the casual, it didn't resonate as much as the first thing because I didn't understand the scope of it. But no, it looks good. But I gotta be honest, right now, I'm a, I'm a little bit of mm. suicide, you know, squad. Yeah. Just because it looked, bro, when they were tasing the penguin <laughs> and they were, he's escaping, and they, do that, yeah. and they do that call. Yeah, it, yeah. it was funny. I like the the setting, the vibe, the trope seemed fun, you know. But where are you at? Which one? Are you leaning more towards? I don't think there's a wrong choice here, but I'm 100 percent in the the side of Gotham Knights. Like, yeah, no, no looking Gotham back. Knight. I just Gotham Knight. I don't want to buy too deeply into Suicide Squad's rumors and reports on how it was a little more live servicey. But I think yeah. actually Jason Trier may have said it, if, if I recall Ooh. correctly. But this that might okay. be completely wrong on my part, so don't run with okay. that. But um. I know there have been reports of that. And beyond that, even the trailer, when it spoke for itself, I was like, OK, mm-hmm. looks looks all right. Um, yeah. Kind of reminded me, and I guess this is the idea. It kind of remind me of every other comic book trailer yeah. I've seen, gotcha, like gotcha, the gotcha. heroes are kicking butt and then they're like, ha ha, we're having fun doing it. Kind of corny for me at this point. <laughs> I just but that's the trailer. Right. And it, that works. Right. We talked about pop culture, buying in, getting people on board. So, you know, I was like, yeah, this this works for a ton of people. Look, they got the casual. So, they got casual DC yeah. cog. Look at so, it. <laughs> hey, why not? Whereas Gotham Knights, I'm really with Dylan on one front is the evil Superman Talk thing you. worked for me with Injustice One. That was like 2013. Yes. I remember when that yes. happened. I played it. It was surprisingly darker. It's probably my favorite Netherrealm story when I think about it, because I remember just being Whoa, you know, we really haven't seen something. Can we like shout this. them out? Yeah, please. Best fighting game stories. They do the best narrative in fighting games. I think they're like the only they, one who does it, but still they do it very well. Namco used to. They kind of fell off. Yeah. But well and connected, mm-hmm. we gotta give Never and them their, their flowers. I've, 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 no, 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 you didn't interrupt at all. It's totally fine because mm-hmm. I, I agree. I agree. I think that mm-hmm. I'm I'm happy that they do it because they don't have any competition. They don't have to, they do it because they want to at this point. Yes. And so shout out to them for that. But yeah, I feel like I've kind of seen to some extent that story, uh, sort of gotcha. injustice, that that style, that topic, if you will. Uh, but that's not going to make me not play Suicide Squad. I'm, I, I love Rocksteady. I want them to make a Ninja Turtle game one day. So I got to support my boys, keep them in business. No doubt. But Gotham Knights, man, mm. it really is put Selling. perfectly by Dylan, where it feels fresh and exciting while still looking like an Arkham game. Yeah. So you see the co-op, you see the Bat family, but no Batman, presumably. Mm-hmm. Like Jason Todd's in this game. Fire. Love all of that. Mm-hmm. But yet it still looks like the open world Arkham stuff we've explored in the past. Yes. I'm all about that. But dude, being able to do that free flow combat with a body. Oh, yeah. combat. Fire. My God, man. Like it it's like something I thought would never happen. And so just again. Touching on what Dylan said, Court of Owls was a big thing to me. I'm not like a big comic book geek, but I remember reading some of the Batman detective novels when they uh, re-released Ooh, them, and uh, okay. a lot of them touched on Court of Owls. Very interesting. Okay, Worth paying okay. attention to. Cool villain group, if you will. Yes, um, yes. I, I, I want to push back on one thing because I, I know Maddie, you know, he's not a big Destiny guy. He's not a big live service guy. Yeah. Not a big yeah. looter guy. And I did hear, because it was funny, when this was announced, that was I was on, shout out to Ryan, the legend. Mm-hmm. I was on, he had me on podcast a lot. And... I was like, Ryan, how are you? Because he's not, he, young Ryan and Ryan are very similar. Oh, no. <laughs> they are not <laughs> destiny guys. They are not looter shooter guys. And I was hearing those mechanics. I'm like, how do you feel? And he was like, I don't know about that part, mm-hmm. right? So how does that part scare you? Because you're not really live service Maddie. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't even say it's because I don't like live service because to my surprise, I'm very open-minded to it. It's just that- yes. What the fuck does Suicide Squad need live service for, man? Like, what do we have to make that's endless about the Suicide Squad? Do we mm-hmm. do we have to go on raids to hunt down evil Superman together? Like, <laughs> is that really what we're going to do with this? I, I, like, I, that just doesn't sound appealing to me. I like, simply put, of course, we know more about Gotham Knights. So that's why it's right. it's more in favor for me. But like, 
Okay. At least with Gotham Knights, I know, hey, I can play this by myself. I can play in co-op, but there's no mm-hmm. monetization. There's there's none of those servicey elements. It's just it's co-op open world. I love that mm-hmm. stuff because there's I no think loot it, drops though. No, there are loot I, drops. I, I, there are loot drops. Yeah, yeah. that's why I know how you felt in Gotham Knights. I, I, I hear where you at. So I just want to know where you at Gotham Knights with the loot stuff, looter shooter yeah. stuff. In it. I um, I'm in the middle on it because I feel okay. like I feel like a lot of games staple it on. So to see a Batman game do it kind of could be cool if okay, they okay, if they do okay. something fun with it. Again, mm-hmm. this was coming off when this was revealed, it was coming off hot on the heels of Avengers release. So when people saw the gear drops, yeah. they saw the co-op, they're like, no, man, they're doing Avengers with DC. <laughs> and what's right. funny is they got slandered for it. They got right. slandered. And it, there was pushback. There really was. And people, and they were just like, no, we're not doing any of this. Like you just completely misread and ran away with this wow. false narrative. Gotcha. So for them, Educate. it just looks like the gear is that gear. Mm-hmm. I would say akin okay. to something like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is okay. my favorite by any means in the mm-hmm. sense of like <laughs> gear. I like Assassin's Creed Odyssey a lot, but just mm-hmm. gear is just numbers, all that stuff. So gotcha. Um, okay. Not the component I'm excited about for the game, really. More so just co-op, open world. Love the Arkham story. Yeah. And I love the idea that Batman's gone. I feel like they're going to bring him back. Yeah. But right yeah. now, I'm, like I'm, I'm biting a little bit. I'm biting. I'm, I'm going to buy into yeah. the idea he's dead. He's gone. Because I think it I like makes that. the game super unique. That That's what sold me. Because I was like, I kind of like that he's not there in this mm-hmm. quote-unquote world where he's dead, he's gone. And now, you know, everyone else has to take up the mantle. That excites me. And I, I do agree. And we have to give Arkham its flowers as far as combat. Okay. The way that, like, so the co-op now with the co- yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, I can totally see why you, you're more excited. Absolutely. But here's the thing. They are the pioneers of free flow. So... Perhaps Suicide Squad is just way better on a gameplay front. That is always possible. We got to see. We got to see. Number 12, final bit of news. Coming soon to Xbox Game Pass. Into the Pit is available now on cloud, console, and PC. Outriders is available now on PC Game Pass. Just take note of that. It took them half a year to get it over here. So just just know how long they, they keep those splits between console, Game Pass, and PC. Good point. Dragon Ball Fighters arrives on cloud and console October 21st. Okay. Echo Generation, cloud console PC October 21st. Everspace 2 arrives on PC Game Pass October 21st. Now we move over to October 28th. Starting off with World's Edge, which is Age of Empires 4. Exclusive Xbox game. Keep that in mind. First party studio Mm. release. Alan Wake's American Nightmare is on console and PC October 28th. Backbone is on console October 28th. Funny thing, I saw uh, the Backbone yeah. Twitter account quote tweeted the announcement that it would be on console Game Pass, and I guess they never made the announcement to their audience, and they were saying <laughs> that Xbox leaked it for them, which is kind of hilarious. Like, no one knew. <laughs> so I, I thought that was actually That's hilarious that, that Xbox was a step ahead of them, but that, Somebody took the bag up top. Yeah, that, that'll be uh, <laughs> console only or uh, uh, for this release. It's already on PC. Yes. yes. Bassmaster Fishing 2022, by the way, this is what's crazy. It's oh. not just available on Game Pass. It's a day one get for Xbox. Cloud oh. console PC, October 28th. You want to get your fish on, go ahead. Give this a shot. I want someone in our audience to try this out. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to waste my time. Yeah, but I want one of you out there to do it. Right. <laughs> I want you to try it out. Let me know how it is. I'm curious. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Non-Guns Doppelganger Edition. Cloud console PC October 28th. Let's go, sure. Mm -hmm. Forgotten City. Cloud console PC October 28th. And then leaving soon on October 31st. Carto exits cloud console PC. Celeste leaves cloud console PC. That's a big one. Comanche leaves PC Game Pass. East Shade leaves cloud console and PC. Five Nights at Freddy's leaves cloud console and PC. Nights and Bikes leaves console and PC. And last but not least, Unruly Heroes leaves cloud console and PC. Mm-hmm. Any standouts here for you, my friend? Yeah, it's, it's a big month. It's a big mm-hmm. month. I mean, like Alan Wake. You know, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. I'm curious how you felt about that one. Oh, dude. <laughs> Yeah, I yes, yeah. I love this game. That's what I heard. A lot, a lot of, a lot of my Dragon Ball 
You know what I'm saying? The crew, they like they like that one. One of the best so fighters I, I ever made. I'll die on that sword. It is Ooh! because it is fan servicey and beautiful while yeah. still one of the most technical fighters you can play. Yeah, I, I got a chance to cover some experts in the Nintendo booth going at it. It was fun to watch them. It was just, yeah, just to see that. So that right there, um, all right, this is big. I'm, I'm going to throw a little gem note. Everspace 2. Oh, I know nothing I had about the this. opportunity. That game was one of those games. I was at a PAX where it debuted. And you know how you walk past something, you go, mm-hmm. what's that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like, hey, I haven't played like a good shooter. Like this game got a lot of depth to it. You know what right. I'm saying? So I want to say like almost an open space universe kind of thing, but a store, a good narrative. And the dev really sold me, man. I only thing I was like, damn. I hit them up on Twitter. I'm like, damn, you couldn't hit us with that console too. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I, I've heard good things about it on PC. I've had, I played the uh, the beta. I was part of that test and stuff. And it's a beautiful looking game. So if you like your ship to ship combat, you like that stuff. And you come from like, um, I don't want to throw. I don't want to throw. That would be too lofty a title on it. But I, I, I like games like I used to like games like Wing Commander. Right, okay. you know what I'm saying? Those type of things where and then you got a little cinematic. But this has a good story. It, I'm telling you, if you like your space flight, like if you're in that, uh, what is it? Elite Dangerous, mm-hmm. No Man's Sky bag, but technically beautiful, way better looking and good mechanics and stuff, keep your eye on that. But yeah, this right. is a good month. This is a good month. You know what I'm saying? What about you? Any uh, standouts for you? Really excited for Age of Empires 4. Never played Age yeah. of Empires. Oh. So of course, I'm really excited for this one um forgotten city i i really wanted to play this one i was gonna get around to it eventually but i was like i'm gonna Mm -hmm. hold off till christmas then they put it in game pass i'm like i kind of want it now it's right there but we'll see if i got time for it it's another time Mm -hmm. loop game okay i want to play it because i I love how i see it it reminds me of rise when i saw like the roman stuff i was like oh it's one of, we we talking Roman. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know they was Roman. That's yeah. that's kind of like that. There. Mm-hmm. Well, tell me about this. What's, what's I going don't on? know much about it. I just know it's like this time loop story game with lots of choices in it, and it, it's reviewed exceptionally well. What's interesting is it began as a Skyrim mod, and mm-hmm. they made it into a full game, um, a full individual game, and it's really really cool. Yeah. So I'm getting my Caesar. Yeah. Oh, yeah, go ahead, this? check it out, man. Cloud oh, console PC, me. and oh, I like the look. I love that time mm-hmm. period. Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah, very Centurion. Yeah, looking. yeah, yeah. So what game? Break it down. Break it down. We know what the gameplay loop is. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think there's occasionally like some first person bow and arrow stuff. But for the most part, you're walking around talking to people, and a lot of the conversations reminded me of weird enough the the Outer Worlds. <laughs> That is kind of what it looked like to me. Oh, bro, you may got me. I mean, I might be in, y'all. Yeah, I know. I'm looking at this. Oh, I love this. Is some legacy season. This yeah. this fits with Iron Lord stuff. Yes. This is what I'm about. Yeah. Oh, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, dude. And I mean, when we were, I'm surprised he didn't catch on to it because when we were talking nice. to Jeff when he was on, he was saying like he loves that game. Like he he was in his top top five. I want to say. I here. remember him talking about it, but I didn't know the actual setting Mm -hmm. see now you getting me in my spartacus bag shout out to my spartacus fan you know what i'm saying like i need now i need to know i'm in i'm in there we go i'm gonna get the download thank you maddie there we go yeah yeah i didn't even know i really want to play that one so hopefully it's it's as good as as what i've heard um 28th let me pre-download on the app oh yeah get the get those reward (laughs) points get those reward points while you define a duke Exactly. Uh, last thing is uh, Dragon Ball Fighters. Download this play yes. if you have yet to give it a chance. Uh, they got mm-hmm. auto combo, so if you're not good at fighters, there are accessible ways to play the game. But there's also a lot of technicality to it. So if you have yet to play it, I know the the controller leaves a little bit to be desired. You got to do a lot of quarter circle rolls in this game, like tons of different. Oh, ton of yeah. So yeah. I may not have the best controller for it, but give it a shot anyway, just to see mm-hmm. how beautiful this game is. No doubt, no doubt. All right, Game Pass pick of the week. Finally, now the news is done. Twelve items. Yes. <laughs> Hell of a week. Yeah. Still a week. got a little Hell bit more week. to go here. Yes, sir. This is me. This is all this you. Is me. All right. Got a shout out the legend of legality, my man Rick Holm. Mm-hmm. We had him on. Um, he we talked about. We had him on uh, last word, and we were talking about what was going on with the legal aspect with that Stan Bungie. But then 
Oh, also shout out. He's got, he's got, he just did something with Colin just recently. He just put it up yeah. on um Last Stand Media right now on the Patreon, I believe. So check him out there. But I got to hit him up because we're talking. This is like post show. What we playing? What's going on? He's like, Cobb, you got to get on that last words. So I'm like, last words beyond the pay. He's like, I'm telling him it's on Game Pass. He's like, you know, I think he said he played it and, and him and his daughter were playing it. And he's just like, an amazing game. Mm. And I'm like, all right. See, Hulk, okay, me and Hulk share a lot of things. Let me see, right? So I download the joint. I put it on. I'm going to be real with you, Matty. The first 15 minutes, I'm like, what is Hulk talking about? I'm about, to go to <laughs> I'm about to go to sleep on this. I'm like, what is this? It's like, it's like a you're reading a book. It's a very unique game. Like first, like you're reading a book, and then there's words going across the page, and then it's like a platformer, like a two a side scrolling platform, okay. and she's jumping on the words, and then you, you know, in order to advance to the next page in the book, you had to then like take one of the words and move it into a slot that they want you to, or, or you pick it, right? Okay. But as it's going on, you're formulating a story, and it has some elements of choice. Where it's like, okay, while she's this this little girl is telling a story, this made up fairy tale, it seems, right? Mm-hmm. And she's like, in this world, there's a, a a girl, and it's like, you know, she has a blank um pendant, you know, and it's like, okay, you can say it's a red pendant, you can say this that, you can formulate, and right. then based on what you choose, it formulates that thing and it visualizes it, right? So it starts to get a little bit of more beauty on the page. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, still, I'm like. What is Hulk talking about? I'm playing this notebook game. Like, what am I? Doing? Like, what? Where do we do with my life right now? So I'm like, all right. So then, after you create, it's like you're creating the chapter in a book. Then the book closes. You go into the game. Then the you know girl with the red dress that you've made and the, she's there. She's walking around. And then this when the game blew me in my mind a little bit because. You get to a part where she's like, you know, oh, I, I'm, I'm learning about my powers and my ability. Let me go to the old mage in the, in the town. You go to her and she's like, look, you're learning. You're the next chosen person. And this is where the game opened up for me. I got to a segment and you get this power. And it's like you have this magic book. Mm. So one of the powers was called Rise, right? And so you take the word Rise, you put it in this 2D op- uh, side scroller game. And now anything I can manipulate and make it rise. Like if a path is blocked, she's using the power to get through, to go through the path. Like, ooh, did I was getting is this, this power code? Cool, by the way, or? All 2D, okay. right? Beautiful art style. Charming. Mm. I'm like, okay, this is looking cool. Then I got this joint called Repair. And I'm like forming book. Then like the game got dark and like my town got burnt down. And and now it's like, you got to go chase the thing. And and I was creating a story. So there's two components. There's the notebook component, which is the precursor to the actual gameplay, right? And the notebook component is you formulating the story, right? right? Then there's the gameplay and what you learned and put in the notebook, you are now using as powers. And you, some of them are finite and some of them are infinite. So I ain't going front. Mm. I was like, I see where this is going. Now, a couple of them, I put it up on Twitter that I was playing it. A couple people hit me up and said, Cog, you ain't ready. Wait till you, like, apparently I hear it's a tearjerker at the end. Really? So I'm, yeah, yeah. It's a sleeper. It's in Game Pass right now. Lost, give it, listen, the first five minutes, you, you, you might want to delete it. I'm just going to let you, <laughs> you, you got to hang in. Just hang in and you're going to see the beauty. It's a very charming, unique game. Okay. And I'm like, all right, Hulk, I got you. I see why, why you like it. And I, I, I got to give it its props. So Lost Words Beyond the Page is the pick. Go check that out. It's, just, on it's worth a download. Yeah, wow. on console right now, bro. Interesting. Yeah, go check it out. Sounds mm-hmm. sounds different when I looked it up. It it, it definitely looks like uh, a nice little indie game, nice little four yes. or five hour run. Yeah, yeah short done. romp, short romp, but very unique. A lot of potential here. A lot of pot- I, I I can see it, and it, it it's, it's 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 all oh, that's the thing that I like about. I forgot to say one last point. While you're playing the game, it's being narrated with with text of the stuff that 
kind of you created earlier, but also in real time. And it adds more to the tension of the game. And I was just like, she's like, oh, no, there's going to be a record. We want revenge. We are doing. And it's talking to you all during the game while you're platforming it. But it's doing it in a very cool narrated style that adds a lot of emotional context to what's going on. Mm-hmm. And it's it's cool. I, I go front. I was like, all right, I'm having fun with this. This is definitely awesome. I'm sticking with it. I'm, I'm going to finish it out. Beautiful. Love to hear it. Excited to hear your final thoughts on it. If it's actually the tearjerker that you were told it was. Yeah. I'm, that's what I'm told. I'm gonna see. I'm on like stage three, and I will see what's chapter three. We're gonna see where it's going. Mm-hmm. Very unique pick, though. I'm sure a lot of people yes. will check that one out. Mm-hmm. For this, now we wrap things up with five patron questions. Thank you all again for writing in so many times. Yes, Matthew Bush is up first. Hi, both. It's my first time writing in with the Lord Himself hosting with Matt. Welcome to the team, and what an impact you've made. It's been great having you in the Last Stand family, gentlemen. It is rumored a new Splinter Cell game is in production. I totally agree with both your takes on Splinter Cell last week, but I still have a little hope for a stellar Splinter Cell game. With IO Interactive making a Bond game and the existing Hitman games, I truly think we could see a run of great spy slash stealth games this gen. Anyhow, my question is, with the release of Daniel Craig's last Bond film a few weeks ago, what is your favorite James Bond game or spy game if your Bond knowledge is dwindling? I was discussing the long list of Bond games with a group of friends, and mine was From Russia with Love on the PS2. I hope you guys have a fire up a multiplayer and find out there's a 25 gigabyte update on a day. <laughs> that was good. I like I did, that. I did, I did, yeah. I've been there. Awful, I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to Storage Expansion Card. Oh, <laughs> well, I was going to say, yeah, actually, this is good. Shout out to Matthew. Call, uh, he actually, I'm in one of the categories where I have not played a lot of Bond games. Mm. I mean, the only one I'm going to say, obviously, is GoldenEye. We all know about that, right? But I'm going to defer to, and Matty will know, surprisingly, my favorite spy game is that little game that me and you have an affection for that never got, you know, the attention it, des- it deserved, which was the Cold War Phantom oh. Doctrine. And bro, that is true espionage. That is true spy. That is tactical. Mm-hmm. There's the, the the world layer component. You can capture agents, brainwash them, yeah. get them to use them on your side. You, the first game that I've seen, you throw disguises on in a turn-based game for infiltration. It, it, mm-hmm. Then I love the mechanic of, okay, you did the, the mission, you stole the thing or you killed the target, now you got to get out of it. And you got to call your escape vehicle. You got three turns. It could be discovered. Mm-hmm. Then the other part that makes the game amazing to me is your, the more your agents are, st- are stationed all over the world doing these operations, the enemy agents could, could then um, try to find and locate you. So you got to move your base around. They got a little cinema. Yeah. Yo, let's close up shop. Yo, we got to get up out of here. They, they know we, that we, we hot right now. Yeah. Like, it's, just, it's just a cool thing, bro. I love that game. Investigation component. Everything about that game. I still talk to the dev on this day. I'm like, bro, when it come out, when your new game, let me know. Because mm-hmm. I'm ready, bro. But what about you as far as James Bond games? Are you a big James Bond well, guy? Growing like, up, holy crap. Ooh. Obsessed. I have two oh, answers, though, this. right? Because I got to throw out the you, you inspire me, right? Because when you were talking, it reminded me it, it unlocked a memory of a game okay. that I played on the Vita. It's also on PS3 and PS4. Which one? I played on the Vita and I love this game. I love it. Have you heard of the game Counter Spy? Mm. It's a 2.5D side scrolling game set in an alternate version of the Cold War. And you're okay. this counter spy going into American and Russian bases. Mm-hmm. and you're trying to prevent them from launching nukes and so you have to stealthily crawl through their base I've in 2d seen this yes I'm looking at it now. this game I remember the art style very beautiful art mm-hmm. style yes i remember this slept on so hard was it perfect no had some flaws i thought the platinum trophy for it was disappointing but this game was awesome to me granted i'm a sucker for alternate history i think cold war stories are kind of fascinating because there's so many untold little like what could have happened moments so doing alternate history with that works well for me but this one is a great spy game if you have yet to play it really cheap too Mm -hmm. highly recommended it as for james bond let's get it go with night fire Mm. okay talk to me this was the the crown jewel if you will growing up right it okay. was the elusive game. You know, it's the game that you've seen at your friend's place. Mm-hmm. Didn't have a lot of money growing up. It always evaded mm-hmm. me. Could never run into it. Could never borrow a copy. 
Mm-hmm. Finally get your hands on it. First person James oh. Bond action, tons of gadgets, tons of ways to approach different missions. I always okay. remember the opening snow mission. Oh, man, this game was great. It's kind of what I'm expecting from IO Interactive's James Bond game. Yes. It's sort of you open level up, you're on the outside of a, a fortress that you're pretty much trying to evade. Mm-hmm. How you want to go about it? Shoot yes. them up, quiet, gadgets. How are you going to do it? That's what I'm anticipating. I feel this game really captures that in a lot of ways. It fixes a lot of the wonky controls from GoldenEye. It evolves what uh, Agent Under Fire did on the original Xbox. What At least that's where I played it. And overall, okay. it, it makes it into a, a really, really strong first-person shooter, if anything. Ooh, Highly okay. recommended. James Bond Nightfire. That's a That's a... A collection of games that I feel that they re-release would do really well if they just took these old ones, everything yeah, or nothing, nice. you know, rush uh, from Russia with love, just combine them all, re-release them as a classics package. Oh my god, I'd be all yeah, over that. That'd be lit. All right, let's keep moving on. Mm-hmm. Lucas Tracy's our next write in. Good afternoon, Dukes. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you guys for creating the only podcast I listen to weekly. This is actually cool. I don't know oh, if you wow. read this yet. Salute. Yes, I did. Salute. A buddy of mine, shout out to Henry, suggested this podcast to me. And I can easily say that you both bring me and countless others a lot of joy and laughter every week. I was a little skeptical at first upon hearing that Maddie has not played Resident Evil 4 and Cog has not played Dead Space. But I let that slide and I continued to listen. Now, mind you, I've righted my wrong. I have played Ooh. and beat Resident Evil 4, Lucas. Oh, so you all the aim is on cog right now <laughs> you go all on coming. him i know i know it's coming he says i'm a huge horror fan resident evil and dead space are two of my favorite franchises ever and i really enjoyed mm-hmm. the evil within outlast dead by daylight and most recently began oh, massage man. never got the chance to play pt but i've watched plenty of videos to see how great it was Do you guys think it's possible that Kojima's letter of intent may, among other things, bring a Silent Hill reboot to Xbox? There's no denying the influence PT had on recent horror installments like Resident Evil 7 and Visage. And since there's the rumored Kojima letter and Konami's partnership with Bluebird Team, I'd love to see Silent Hill get the reboot it deserves. Thanks for what you guys do week in, week out. I hope you have a pebble in the middle of your shoe while walking kind of day. There, Everyone's hitting the right tone right now. This is everyone saying things. I'm like, I know that feeling. That's. I know that yeah, one. That's that's, a, that's the worst. Always, that's why I wear slip ons. Just pull them off, shake your shoe, <laughs> take your shoe out, yeah, yeah. and put it back on. And it's like a relief on like any other. Facts. Yeah, what are you yeah, expecting for that. the the Kojima cloud game? Mm-hmm. Is it is it going to be a known IP? Do you think it's going to be mm. uh, a current one or new? Mm, I don't know. I mean, shout out to Lucas. Appreciate the love. Mm-hmm, um, absolutely. Yeah, I still think. You know, the vibe is this, I look at his last effort, you know, with Death Stranding and that component of these connecting strands and community. And then we know that he pitched whatever his game was to Stadia and they, they almost came close to the letter of intent before, you know, Google kind of got out of there and then here comes Microsoft. So to me, there's still going to be that level of connectivity. Does that automatically eliminate horror not necessarily but i don't know man i, I don't want to get you know lucas too gassed up mm-hmm. like you go get you know say that kind of a silent hill or horror reboot kind of thing you know i'm not there i don't kajib is so out of the box he's so eclectic you don't know what you're gonna get right. so i'm not willing to commit that it, it's that dream game kind of thing yet. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But um, I, I just want, I know one thing, it, it, it's going to be graphically a beautiful game because mm-hmm. one thing about him, his production values, they're up yeah. there. Like you're going to get some production value from this man. So I, I just feel he's in this experimentation bag and he sees some potential in cloud and connectivity and that is going to be a core component. And I don't know how that plays with horror, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he finds a way. Yeah. What, what do you think? I don't think it's horror or Silent Hill. I think if it were Silent Hill and he pitched it to Google, I think I know Google, we we, we like to rib and say they don't know yeah. what they're doing. I think they had enough of a clue to know if it was Kojima saying, I'm working in tandem with Konami to have the rights to do a Silent Hill game that I am pitching right. to you. 
they would have been all over it because that would have been right. something attractive for their system. And especially with the amount of, uh, I say there's no disrespect, but Kojima mm. fanboys who will play mm. anything he's got and hype up anything he's got, that, that brings them a lot to their platform. So my guess is it was something that was new. So mm. I'm thinking it is going to be a new IP from Kojima. What it is, I have no idea, but I think you tapped yeah. into something perfectly that I never considered, which is, you look at that stranding, that connectivity in that game. It's, they called it the strand genre. A bit of an exaggeration, but uh, you know, we, we let it slide. We get it. You know, that, certainly, I'm, I'm a fan of Todd Howard, and he he's absolutely stretched the truth a time or two. Um, yes, yes, yes. So when you look at that, and then the connectivity that could be powered through the cloud, I think Kojima. If anyone's going to do a cloud game and sell people on what cloud gaming is, almost like the the Half Life Alex of cloud gaming, right? Like this is yes. this is what you want in VR, right? This whole experience yes. on the bottom. I feel like Kojima has the potential to deliver that because, ding ding he ding, just, yeah. he's he's weird enough to do it. I don't know how else to say yes. it. his mind goes to those yes. places that I don't think others traditionally um, do. You just nailed it. I, I think if anybody's going to justify cloud he would be the guy to make the killer app in the space mm -hmm. like at Alex is for VR, right? They consider that the killer app yeah. for I'm with you there. That, I think he's going to find some innovative way to use it. And I'll always give him credit. He's outside the box. So yeah, that, that's what I, yeah. I, I, I'm completely with you. Absolutely. If it's horror, it's horror, but I just, I think it's going to be something that's really unlike anything we've seen. Cause when you think about it, we haven't mm -hmm. seen anyone take the cloud outside of probably Microsoft Flight Studio and do something yeah. unique. But even with Microsoft Flight uh, Simulator, not Studio, sorry, mm -hmm. um, yeah. they did it in a way that I think is practical, easy to digest, easy yes. to understand. You look at it, and you go, yes. okay, the cloud gave us these location data. You, you understand mm -hmm. how they were pulling from it. Does Kojima do that to build a world? How big is this world? Right. Does he do it to connect us? How does he connect us? Right. Again, I think he can get really crafty, creative with it and do something that only cloud gaming can do. And like you said, absolutely. sell us on it effectively. Yeah, absolutely. And then him with Microsoft's funding and budget, mm -hmm. he's going to hit the target. He, it, it, I mean, as far as what he's trying to accomplish, yeah. I have no doubt yeah. in my mind. And I think Microsoft will give him that money because oh. they know this is such an important thing for them to be able to show oh, yeah. up. Even if he ends up, which has been rumored, shows up and works for PlayStation 2. Just to be able yeah. to say Kojima's doing an ex Xbox exclusive game is a lot yeah. for Xbox, which is because it's never happened before. And it shows yeah. it's a testament to like Japanese developers to Game Pass, the power of all of those combined, like yes. what Xbox can do. And you, you bet your butt when this gets revealed, mm -hmm. there are going to be other Japanese developers who want to work with Xbox because Kojima Absolutely. wants to. And there's a trust level there. There's a respect there. Yes. That's why I think it's imperative for Microsoft to to really play nice, to really give him what he needs, mm -hmm. and then we know take what the, the loss on are. if you got to even. Yeah, you got to take the loss because to me, the long term game is is way more beneficial. Like you just nailed it, the, the trust with Japanese developers, getting them on board, right. saying, "Hey, it's okay to work with Xbox." We already talked about the deficiencies. We had so many defining dukes with Xbox in Japan, mm -hmm. right? Kojima is a key part, right, mm -hmm. to with all of this stuff. So yeah, yeah, throw the bag, throw the bag at him. He's got the track record. He's got the repertoire. And let's be real, from the optics standpoint, it looks good to have PlayStation's, one of their major contributors yeah. over the years on your platform publicly facing, I say, Game Awards. Mm -hmm. You do the splash. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. I like that. I like that idea. Not yeah. only that, but let's be honest. Phil, he's a nice guy, but he's smart, too. Yeah. And um, yeah, we know what's going on. You're coming on. off Death Stranding, not doing too high. Mm -hmm. And you say, we got you. We got He's you. What, what, they don't want to, he knows the yeah, optics they don't of the want, situation. Exactly. They don't want to re up with you over there. Come over mm -hmm. to us. Put the I'd say arm around mm -hmm. Kojima, Keegley, yeah. and go on stage and make that optics yeah. happen. Hundred <laughs> percent. Because again, I think he's going to work with PlayStation again, but right now it's yeah. going to look like Xbox came in after Death Stranding didn't do too well. Oh, Kojima, you're struggling. We got you, man. Yeah. We want. We, we just want to support creators here, right? Yeah. Like, and he, he knows what it looks it, like. Gives him, it gives Kojima the ultimate leverage that he can be like the ultimate mercenary. And go <laughs> yeah. he he's like insomniac, he but he's an individual man, right? He's just like, well, <laughs> wherever he wants. <laughs> Fact. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you for the write in, um, Lucas. Really, really good question. No Ryan Griffith's up next. Hello, Marsupial Maddie and Creamy Cog. God, that's, that's disgusting. <laughs> they lose my <laughs> <laughs> Does Arcane have a marketing problem? 
when I think of the gameplay and CGI trailers that have been released for Des- uh, Dishonored 1 and 2, Prey, Deathloop, and even Redfall, I can't help but think the trailers do either a bad job of explaining what the moment-to-moment gameplay is, or the trailers are somewhat misleading. I don't know about you guys, but when I watched the CGI trailer for Redfall, I was confused by what the game would actually be and was not expecting an open worldish looting co-op game if the leaks are to be believed which i think they are by the way they're literal yeah. visual screenshots and gameplay of it it's also possible that the misleading marketing has led to poor sales for arcane games as people are not expecting an immersive sim when they buy arcane games hope you both have a scale bound is forever canceled kind of day and keep fucking that damn chicken gentlemen Ocelot. <laughs> I would defer to you here first because okay. uh, you, you, you're, you're Lord Arcane, Lord Bethesda. I always got to defer to you first with Thank these you. topics. Um, so uh, where you at, man? I, I think they definitely do. Uh, the Again, the, the best example recently, I think you got an idea of what Prey was. Prey was supposed to be mind yeah. fucky. It was supposed to be kind of trippy, set in space. You knew it was going to be immersive sim. I thought they did a good job with that. Just I don't Ooh. know why they failed to capture a large audience. I don't know what it is. Deathloop, though, is like the testament to what the fuckery in my eyes, because I think you and I are pretty hardcore ear to the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I felt like every time they tried to explain it, it was like a Kingdom Hearts storyline in a way. It's like they they were talking (laughs) to you saying, this is what's happening, right? This is what it is. And they just couldn't get the point across. Like, I still was like, I think I get it. But what about this? There's always a lingering Mm -hmm. question mark. And I think it's a testament to the complexity of the design of the game, or in my opinion, how it appeared to be, but really wasn't. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I digress. Leave my opinion out of it. We know. I know know how you feel. (laughs) I do think that overall they have a marketing problem because also what Ryan said here is perfect. You don't, Mm -hmm. you cannot get a feel for anything but the tone of Redfall through that trailer. And it's I think the four player co-op was understandable. It's four people running yes. around doing things, working together, saving each other. You get a feel for right. the tone and co-op, but open world looting, that type of stuff. Uh, not really. Not at all. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It, it, I think they do a, a poor job of selling you on what you see first. Same thing with Deathloop. Yeah. I remember Deathloop when it came around. I was like, oh, traditional arcane game, new IP. And then you find out or time periods and time period. you, you start to hear that it's very action-based They're like no but there's stealth too which that was true yeah. and then you hear about how uh there's certain things at certain times which i didn't think was true you know for the most part and so mm-hmm. uh it's just it, the way they speak about their games and market it like they they need a new head of marketing like they need because it's not mm-hmm. their games because like dishonored right. one did well but like after that like something's happened where their quality has been good and in cases better but they just can't get out there and that's why they're going to be probably one of the biggest beneficiaries of game pass and i think redfall of course if it's a a decent game and pans out well i think can be sort of the the breakthrough title for them that they need like it's 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 hitting all the current trendy things open world co-op loot you get that arcane open world design or i'm sorry uh, a level design in there um and if every like pocket of the world's like its own individually crafted dishonored hub yeah. You might have something there that works really well. But I agree with Ryan. I do think there's a a, 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 pro, a problem with presentation even. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I agree with Ryan, especially with Redfall, because I remember Redfall, if I recall, for the uh, Microsoft Bethesda E3 showcase was the closer. Right. Correct. That was yeah. the just one more thing. Right. Yep. And again, I'm not saying the game looked bad or anything. I'm not saying like, I just, I, li- I like the character designs and some of the, the things that they had going on, but I just felt like I didn't get a sense of what really I'm going to be doing, <laughs> it, it, you know, kind of thing. And besides the fact that, yes, it's co-op, I'm shooting. Okay, cool. Right. Got it. But I'm with you. Like, I, I, I never said this, publicly. not that I was disappointed. But whatever they were trying to convey didn't resonate with me. Like, okay, I, we're definitely doing this, and this is the structure, mm. and I just it, something was missing for me, right? And I know what you mean when you when you talk about you know dishonor and stuff like that. I mean, excuse me, with death loop, and um, I'm like, yeah, that part about the time loop. You know, later on we got more stuff. I think you know what it feels like. It feels like they're in this bag where they don't want to give stuff away but it's this fine line because like yeah i get it you don't want to give stuff away too much but at the same time 
you if you don't give anything where people don't have a true direction, then you can end up turning off people from th- something that you may have that's special and is actually quality. So in, they're in this weird pocket. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. Because I, I, I hope, I mean, Redfield looks like it has a lot of potential, but as of right now, until I see more, mm-hmm. I'm not, oh my God, like I'm not in that zone just yet until I see more. Because I still, I have so much questions of, of what's well, it's happening. It's also, I think, uh, because of how many new things they're doing too, uh, you can't really yeah. establish a cadence, a reputation of your prey, death loop, red fall. That's yeah. three. Right. And then you look yeah. at Dishonored where they did death to the outsider. And it's like, is this a sequel? What is this? Which it was a wrap up for the series. It was excellent, right. mind you. But um, I think there's a lot of confusion on that front too. Yeah. So absolutely. Absolutely. Arcane. I could go on forever about <laughs> i know i love them man i think they're i think yeah, they're great people yeah it's super super underrated don't get enough credit absolutely move on to giovanni D'Amico's question hey guys recently played through kenna on ps5 and really enjoyed the i like this word here new nostalgia of playing nice. through a gorgeous next gen game that feels like an old school platformer do you think there's a place for this kind of game in the Xbox ecosystem or a need for it? Or was that just a lightning in a bottle and a time and place sort of thing? I feel like Rare tried so many times to recapture that old feeling post-acquisition. Never quite got there, though I did hear good things about the ukulele side-scroller, The Impossible Lair, made by former Rare employees at Platonic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Giovanni, I, I'm with you. Shout out to Kenna. I mean, that thing is beautiful. It, it is like really gorgeous and to, to see like a a new dev you know with that level of quality and that pixar-y kind of vibe like yeah why why not why i, I don't mind xbox getting into that bag like, please do please do it would be who playstation to um see what's going on with them dudes for their first game yeah. you know out the box to be looking like that so yeah 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 i think so i mean rare rare should have been that in my opinion Rare should have been there. And then I'll be honest, I was when we when I saw Everwild for the first time, I actually liked what I saw, even though I didn't understand everything yeah. that was going on. I, I liked what I saw. But now I'm hearing rumors of development issues. Right. Who knows? And you know, so rare should have been that lane. So I they, that that again goes into the earlier thing for me, which is you know, where they need the family, the kitty, the, you know, they need, you got to get the Nintendo dude. Mm -hmm. To me, the Xbox ecosystem right now, outside of the only one they had was Ori, right? Right. Ori, you going to get the Nintendo dude with that. And, you know, they they love it. They Obviously, they did the deal, but Moon Studios is not locked in. They want to remain independent, right? Mm -hmm. Which still leaves that void. And sorry to say, Super lucky tail ain't gonna do it. You yeah. know, what I'm <laughs> you, know it, it, you know, it's a nice attempt, nice attempt. But you know, at the end of the day, they need it. They need it. Like I, I like Cuphead was that bag, right? But mm, Cup, like the one that they like get away. They let get away, and it's like, what is it? M H D R. I always put. Yeah, I, I, I always forget. Yeah, like studio, initials, you know the, yeah. yeah, the initial studio. You know what I'm saying? So you you need that because the Nintendo guy is a deficient. Thing. you need the cutesy you need the fun you need the family that'll get people in in yeah. in the ecosystem so yeah i'm with giovanni here i hey see what's going on with uh canada mm-hmm. if you know nothing ain't popping over yeah. there, like, hey. Okay. Hey, <laughs> we like what you, what you did yeah, we like what you did baby you want to come over here and bring some stuff yeah. try some things absolutely <laughs> like, what do you think i um it's two things that are kind of underrated in uh in i think game development and um the release of a game um, one thing, actually, this ties back into our, our, our previous question about uh, Arcane, and it's really like, can you explain your game in like a couple sentences, like yes. what it is, what yes. it does uh, I, I, on a bare bones level? And I think that's something mm-hmm. Arcane struggle with. The other thing is a lot of people don't really put a lot of weight into it, and I think they should, that the timing of a release is everything. Um, you look at, yeah. uh, yes. of course, the infamous Battlefield 1 versus Titanfall 2 <sighs> situation, but yeah. you also look at something like Death's Door. I don't think Death Store mm-hmm. would have popped off and hit the many hundreds of thousands of sales that it saw if it released now versus it hitting a pretty dry time in July. 
Um, I don't think it would have maybe reviewed even as well because there's a factor of this is the new thing. There is this is the exciting thing. It's an excellent game, by the way. I'm not taking anything away from it. But timing of a release is important beyond just the convenience of being able to play the game. It's important because sometimes you're delivering something that people are looking for. Sometimes you're you're of course, it works against you. You've delivered something that people are tired of. Games take a while to make. So you get something like advanced warfare rolling around where people are like, we want boots on the ground. And they're like, well, we've been working on this for three years. Like we, we got to deliver this. And it, you, you look yeah. out of touch, even though there's no walking back on it. So you just got to release it anyway. Um, so that's one part of game development that doesn't get talked about enough. Um, is that, you know, once you commit to a vision, you got to think to yourself like, Hey, in four years, obviously we can't yeah. see the future, but what's this going to look like? That's why I'm on a separate note, just really excited about our game. Cause I'm like, I think Woo. we're in a spot where, and what we're doing visually where it's like, it's going to think resonate with people. Let's go. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling good about Man, that, but it's true. something I thought about a lot. And I know other devs have thought about a lot is you got to be really conscious of, of your ideas. Like right now, if you're like, I want to do an open world live service game. It's like, well, <laughs> in four or five years, <laughs> fuck. Good, good, yeah, luck. Yeah, yeah. good luck. I want to do a battle royal yeah, game. Yeah. Let's battle go. royale. Let's do, let's do a mode. It's like in two years, see you later. And it's, Unless you're Halo, yeah. I, I don't think you're going to have a lot of success being a new Battle Royale game, right? So yeah. um, I just wanted to emphasize that real quick because Giovanni brought it up. I don't think that Kenna is a time and place thing because I didn't really see a lot of talk about it after it released, which surprised me. This game looks beautiful. I really, yeah. really, really do want to play it, uh, especially hearing it's kind of old school 3D platformer. Yeah. Uh, looks mm-hmm. like the combat was solid, too. Uh, again, I love the term Giovanni used here of nostalgia. That really nostalgia. captures what yeah, I, I think like the game looked like. Uh, you just got to put yeah. a word to it. Uh, but th- does yeah. Xbox need a game like this? I, oh, yes, yes. You know, we, we talked about it a lot, so I don't want to beat a dead horse here. But yeah. I just think that Xbox needs to address that. I like Super Lucky Stale, I'll be honest. I, I, I like Oh, shout, shout out yeah, to you. I, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I, I, granted, played it for three hours, right? Played it for three <laughs> hours. So I, I didn't play okay. the full game. But uh, well, it was when it, I was well, testing like remote streaming. I was playing on my iPad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shit was awesome. I dug it. So, but so um, they added what? 120 frames? Yeah. Like yeah. Okay. 120. Too. And I was like, this mm-hmm. is saying bad. I kind of dug it. But yeah. uh, I'm glad it exists. I will say yeah. that. You know, it, they need it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And I just do more of that. Do more of that. So yes. uh, again, I think a, 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 more and more as this topic gets visited by our audience and we we dwindle on it. I think the time for a Banjo remake has never been more pressing yeah. than than getting that announced i really think they should look into that if they haven't already yeah i agree i agree it would not be opposed to that and that and that would get so much community credit and fan service yeah. and people going crazy and yeah, it's so sure. relevant man so it's, oh, yeah, it's time yeah. i think yeah but people want it last question of a very long show steve forgione Ooh. writes in hey dukes with your recent streak of special guests on the show what's the likelihood We'll ever see an episode with Mr. Xbox himself, Phil Spencer. You've already had mm. popular journalists like Jeff Grubb, Ryan McCaffrey, Jason Schreier on Defining Duke and ILP, as well as Cog having Jason Ronald and other Xbox developers on ILP. Despite it probably being a scheduling nightmare, I don't find it out of the realm of possibility that you guys could get an interview with Phil and talk about what he's done for Xbox and his potential plans for the future. Let me know your thoughts. Have a Crackdown 3 meta score of a day. <laughs> Sincerely, Stephen. I saved this for the end because I had a feeling it'd be a long show. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. you know, we've we've sort of been making a statement for our audience, and I took it personally. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. You know, we took it personally. Like, look, we 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 know the network we're on. Right. This is this is all star is all star team. So much talent. You know, shout out to Sacred Swim. has got so much respect, and obviously so much respect for you and you and Carrick Bill. And you know, there's a there's a part of me that you know the new guy got to you know, put his bones in, put his work in, you know what I'm saying? And I take, I do take it personally. And I do love to see people give, give us a chance, the new iteration, right. Of, of Duke. So, um, you know, for me, it's like, I'm honored, you know, that we were able to so far to make some things happen with these great guests. We got more things cooking, you know, in reference to Phil, I mean, I mean, it's a no brainer. Who, who doesn't want, as King calls him, Phil Dominus Maximus, the real <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't want Phil? Like, of course, like it, it's a no brainer. And I just think that, um, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, now the, the word is getting out, yo, Come check the Dukes out, man. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a lot going on over here, you know? And Maddie, Maddie puts together a phenomenal show. He makes it very yeah. easy for me. 
you know, I come to work, I, I strap in, I try to do my research and, 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 and give you guys, you know, the passion that, that I can bring. But to, to Phil, yeah, absolutely. We want more. We, 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 we would love to sit down with him and, you know, even if it's for a limited time, just to, to pick his brain. And also, you know, it, it's, it legitimizes us as well as give you guys, you know, stuff that you guys, some, you know, questions and things that you may have that you want to ask, you know, the, the top brass mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm all for it. You know, it, it's definitely one of those bucket list items. And who knows? Who knows what the future holds? Yes. Yeah. But currently, <laughs> we have a, a, a list of yes, we just announced two more. Granted, they've yes. already been on the show, but we're doing that special crossover yeah. show that we, we we had promised uh back when Avengers i think Rand assembled. had had come on that's what we talked about yes. it. so yes, um yes. we were originally talking about waiting for a studio acquisition but i think this is just as it has the potential to be yeah. just as significant huge, huge. certainly it doesn't need to be the and, last time right yeah absolutely and i want to shout out you know ryan coming on too that that was tremendous for us i love the love look i got og checked you see what's mm-hmm. in the background mm-hmm. right now the og came down and said wait you cannot be a duke until you fulfill the requirements led yep. for the duke and there you go you know what i'm saying yep. and maddie's gonna be doing it we got things cooking with that too that we're gonna be doing mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying but yeah 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 like love it love it man I, it, it's cool it's cool to see but yeah stay tuned and hopefully you know Get that mm-hmm. you know, Uncle Phil in there. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. We uh we're continuing to shoot for the stars with this show yes. and as many ways as we can for a podcast, by the way, where you know you don't want to mm-hmm. disrupt the structure uh too yes. often. But uh, you know, a lot of this is we want to have conversations with people. We know the Xbox community is very collaborative, as you've already seen so far. And if you pay attention to those other creators, you'll know like I've guessed it on their shows. I know Cog has guessed it on their yes. shows. So it's it's been really great to to see we're a part of a community that everyone's lifting each other up. So we're also just kind of doing our part. But we also want to show that, uh, again, we're not always trying to beef with everyone here. We want to mend yes. relationships as well. Preach. It's really important for us and one of our show Big goals. Time. But uh, yeah, we also, again, we, we know some people aren't clicking if it's just Cog yeah. and I. Because not because yeah. they don't like us. They just don't care. Yeah. And so we're like, how do we get them in the door to make them care? And so we're doing a little bit of Game Pass research here. We're like, okay, yes, let's get let's get Ryan McCaffrey in. We know you like him. We know we know you're curious mm-hmm. about him. Who are these two? Mm-hmm. And so that's yeah. that's kind of what we're looking for. But we also know the the core audience that listens to us a lot. You know, if yes. if I critique anything about a lot of podcasts, it's um, you can start to predict the the host's thoughts when they're. Yeah there it's the same stable right i'm big on guests you know you don't need a guest every week but like every number of weeks having a new yeah. set of thoughts in there it refresh it refreshes the 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 thoughts i think it refreshes our energy too our energy is always like yeah. constantly being re-upped um not that yep. we're we i don't think we've really had an episode together where we've droned or it's been kind of whatever mm-hmm. but it i feel like an extra little bit of uh a zip i agree in my, in my step when i'm when i'm getting around and knowing we got a big yeah. guest on the way Oh, for sure, for sure. And then, like you said, it's the inflection of different ideas, different viewpoints, right? Because like you said, you, sometimes it's it's human nature, you know, sometimes you get into tropes or you get into patterns yeah. or whatever, whatever. And then I also like when we're challenged and they're like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel completely different. Right, this right. Is, okay, cool. Let's get yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love that type of stuff. It, it's great. So, and shout out to the community and shout out to everyone that supports the Dukes and and will and also the big guests that's willing to come on. But yes, we definitely would like to include it. Not because is it going to be like some every week thing? Mm-hmm. No, but you know, just once in a while to, to mix it yeah, up. Yeah, I know? um, you know, with with our guests, it's it's we're trying to climb up, right? Like we we can't just be like, hey, Phil, one of our like yeah. first guests, come on in. Like right. we're trying to work our way up the ladder a little bit here. So of course, that's something that I feel confident we'll be able to nail and get get going on the show. Uh, it's it, to me a matter of when of course i'm not saying it's a lock fill in i'm just saying more so like yeah. i feel pretty confident that we run a professional enough show um yes. and an authentic enough show to to have them want to be hopping on there Listen, man i'm hearing some some of the iop dudes and them, them, them betrayed it was like yo car gotta go front i like you over there <laughs> <laughs> i'm like look it's all good you know because everybody's got a different style yeah. and everybody you know and people love what we're doing i mean literally again not to put business out but this is public record in the sense that you know we knew the situation with grub but grub said like bro i love you guys i love what you and maddie do yeah. you know and i was just like bro thank you for to get the respect from our peers mm-hmm. you know 
and it, it seemed like Ryan had a good time. You know what I mean? So like, I love it. I love to say it. Then also, you know, there's people that you bring in that I'm not as familiar with or vice versa and to see them respect you and, and vice versa. Like it's cool, mm-hmm. you know, and that communal thing. So I love it. I love Absolutely. It. So we'll keep chipping away at that, uh, trying to build this show here into hopefully one day the biggest Xbox podcast. But until then, we, yeah. we hope you continue to enjoy our show. And we got to remember, we're only 40 episodes deep, 42 episodes deep. So yeah. we're, we're still a young show with uh, a lot mm-hmm. to learn so absolutely absolutely that's all i've got for this episode cog anything you got yeah. to wrap this up or shall we get into the hashtag yeah we got to get a hashtag there was, there was so many times mm-hmm. i'm like damn i'm really at a lot like it was so much to talk about so much dd <laughs> so much or hmm so much is it yeah, yeah so much dd yeah because it was it was yeah. yes it, bro so it was the fine and duke three plus hour so- episode facts you're right all right I like you're right it. i like Literally, it i like it hashtag like it. so much dd drop it comments at g27 status at lord cognito if you want to tweet us let us know you got this deep we're looking forward to hearing your thoughts on this fat episode <laughs> any uh closing words sir oh man love it community's been great love the write-ins your write-ins have been awesome Tremendous time. It was so it was, it was so much news. Mm-hmm. There's stuff we had to kind of leave off. It was so much yeah. news, but it, it was good, man. I'm looking forward to. We got some things cooking up, and another great defining Duke. The Dukes in the building. Put your Dukes up. Fantastic episode. Absolutely. So until then, take all right care of yourselves, and we'll see you next week for episode 43. Peace out. Peace. Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast, is a product and trademark of Last Stand Media and Collins Last Stand LLC and is recorded from the United States of America. The show is conceived by Matthew Mr. Matty Plays Schroeder and me, Colin Moriarty, and is written and produced by Matthew Schroeder. Maddie's co-host is Barry Lord Cognito Eversley. Defining Duke's executive producer is Dustin Furman, and the show is edited by associate producer Ben Smith. All of Last Stand's theme music is by Ramon Narvaez. As you know, all of Last Stand Media's shows, including Defining Duke, are fan-funded on Patreon at patreon.com slash laststandmedia. The following names are at the producer support level on Patreon, and we're thankful for your kindness and generosity.